Preface. If you have better things to do, this video probably isn't for you. If you have a lot of time to kill, and you need something to listen to in between the minutia of whatever you're doing, I know the feel, then this might just be for you. The video could be over two hours long. You have been warned. This video centers around DSP and his erroneous lies. <laughs> you can't, I can't be Walter Cronkite and talk about DSP. I might receive help with this from the detractor community. Memeology will contribute pieces as well that I've missed. Trying to debunk all of Phil's little white lies, if you will, is very time consuming and life consuming. The video will cut short abruptly due to the fact that my computer literally couldn't handle the over two hour audio and video I was working on for the DSP interview video, which led to my computer actually crashing and deleting the video. Why am I toxic? By the way, I'm not the be all end all on knowledge of DSPism. I am a new scribe in the cartography that is DSPism. In order to get a good grasp of this man as a person, it would take you literally months, if not years, to try and catch up with everything. You're going to have to look towards guys like Tevin or something, uh, Ludwig World Order, uh, DSP Archives on Twitter. Literally, it takes an entire team to try and keep up with all the machinations in this man's head. And I honestly believe he believes some of the things he says. Do I feel Phil is evil? No. Do I think he is dishonest? Yes. Very dishonest. What are you talking about? He's having fun. Back. We got bone meal here. Fucking potion. Big up's a little blurry potion. Oh my god, what a mess. Man, I can't believe he your wants to stream this for the whole stream, stream honestly. Top the night. By himself, too. He says, watch your interview, YouTube, because very honest and humble. Cheers to you, Phil. Thank you, Elonious Monk. Uh, I mean, the intention reply? was to try to come across as a real person and not come across. a giant meme or, uh, you know... A lol cow, as sadly a lot of people know me as because they don't actually know me as a person, nor do they attend my streams, nor do they know the full story of anything that happens to me. They just hear the negative spin that all the idiots put on it in order to make a name for themselves and get recognition for themselves and make money themselves. So it was good to get a fair shake, and it was a great interview. How does money always get brought up, DSP? I thought it wasn't about money. I basically saw a lot of positivity okay. this week as a result of the interview, so I'm very happy the way it went. What fucking positivity did he see? He was begging today. <laughs> Man. Oh man, it is two in the morning. I shouldn't even be doing this, honest to God. As I try to limit DSP content. I know some people say, well, the Cordelin did the video so he can get a really I turned this shit on and that's when people message me. I know some people say the Cordelin did this video with DSP to get a lot of views and blah blah blah. Listen. I can tell you from experience, DSP videos are not a ratings getter, okay? Like, for real, if you need proof that DSP watching is like a, an acquired taste, look no further than in streams. You go to DSP streams and it's like parts of Japan, it's a ghost town. There's <laughs> like a few people who are so loyal to the pig gnosis that they stop in and throw a few bits in them. Here you go, Phil. Been watching you since 1942. You, you really made good content. I was in a rough spot, Phil, but that time when you jerked off on stream, it really turned my life around. What is up, everyone? Hello, hello, and welcome. Oh, the camera's on. The camera's been on the whole time, huh? I don't even know. Hello. Anyway. The interview with uh, DSP and the quarterling, it didn't go well. And, you know, for obvious reasons, let's face it. Uh, Jeremy, the, the quarterling, he isn't a DSP fan. He isn't a DSP watcher. He doesn't know the lore. I tried explaining some DSP stuff to him, but let's face it. You got to be real with yourself as a detractor. How many people in your life, when you try to expose them to the minutia that is the lore of DSP, care? You know, I remember I used to annoy a girl I was dating with DSP, I was like, look, look what Phil is doing. Look what he is up to. This man is an unscrupulous piece of crap. And she's like, oh my God, if you don't stop showing me DSP, I will leave you. Long story short, she left. So yeah, thanks, Phil. In order to really do an interview of DSP, you need somebody like Tevin. 
uh, Almighty Tevin. You need him. Oh my God, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my God. No, we got to stop the stream. I just received a dollar tip from an anonymous tipper. And they just informed me that Almighty Tevin is watching my stream right now and talking crap about me. Ah! Ah! Who cares? <laughs> Who gives a shit? Oh my god. Like anyone gives a flaming fuck about that loser. You probably need memeology. Someone Julius Cruz, uh, GTG Network, uh, Snort Burnell. Uh, who else is there? Oh my god. Mighty D. There's so many. What's sad is DSP stuff, is it becomes so pointless to keep up with that even some of the greatest detractors have left. I still lament that Dick Stroking Phil Vlogs is gone. Hello everyone, Darkside Phil here. Uh, today is actually in regards to once again YouTube and ad revenue. Oh no! I hate to be a broken fucking record and make a video like this every month, which I know many of you don't care about. If you don't care about it, I recommend you jump out the window. Alright. I'm gonna calm down now. The past couple of weeks, people have been saying, Phil seems stressed out. Why do you think? Because I'm babysitting Leanna every day and it's driving me nuts. It's just a mind fuck, basically. Oh, by the way, I'm completely disabling comments and likes and dislikes on this video. YouTube comments are so fucking toxic at this point, there's no reason for them to even exist anymore. Those idiots who fucking are gonna tear this video apart to make me look bad, they're gonna steal this video illegally anyway and post it on their own fucking channels. So let them have all that vile negative comments and shit on their own fucking channels and keep it off of mine. Ah, fuck DSP. He made the best DSP videos because he'd take a DSP pre-stream thing where DSP sits and he pontificates the same stories over and over and over again. I swear to God, DSP is like a broken record. But anyway, Dick Stroke and Phil Vlogs would take it chop it up and it'd be hilarious i'll look for a clip to show you it's it's funny stuff uh, it's too bad he quit i think he went to college anyway enough of this i i may as well try to get through this as quickly as possible i know people demand it i hope this doesn't turn into like a multiple day video editing session where i'm like searching for proof because if i don't find enough stuff to refute what DSP, dsp saying it's basically my word versus his and on the internet that means absolutely jack shit on top of that, the Coeur couldn't have me on the interview with DSP because it would be over, all right? He would play the good cop, I'd be the bad cop. By the time I got my questions in, Phil would have checked out. It would have been over. As uh, Almighty Tevin says, I would have gone to ban world. All right, let's do this. My head is already ringing because I know what I'm in for. All right, let's fast forward to the DSP stuff. It is actually impressive that the Coeur did get an interview with DSP because anyone who follows DSP knows. DSP pulls out faster than I do with a woman. Like the second it comes up close to D-Day for DSP to do a podcast or an interview, he quits. He pulls out. Who cares? Any exposure is good exposure, right? But anyone who has like a following of their own wouldn't want to associate with me because they know that there's these hundreds of trolls who just troll the shit out of anything that I'm involved in. Already they're shitting all over the quartering because of this interview, you know, and it's fucked up. Like, what did I do wrong? What did he do wrong? Nothing, right? Um, it's pretty stupid in my opinion, but it sucks. I can never get any kind of a sizable collab going because of these idiots that just ruin everything. Um, DSP's Rocktologist tipped me a dollar. I'm, I'm digging your interview with the quartering. What made you do it? Did you charge him for it? Uh, I'm pretty sure it doesn't work that way. I'm glad the lies that you've been dodging interviews are false. The tractors and wings can eat shit for lying. Enjoy the rest of the evening. I was never dodging interviews at all. Never did I dodge a single interview. You said no and the lie detector test determined Ralph. That was a lie. Let me tell you why. We were doing the podcast show and DSP said, Yo, we're trying to schedule it. Say it's July 25th right now. We're trying to schedule it for... August 25th, so a month from now, like four episodes from now, we're hitting up DSP, like, yo, can you do the show um, next month on the 26th, like, just so his calendar is clear, or maybe three weeks, two weeks, whatever it was. He said, no, I'm going to be sick then, dude. 
This dude said he's got to be sick in a month. Like, he scheduled it on his calendar that he was about to be sick. Pathetic. Horrible. Like, what the fuck is that, dude? I mean, it might have been his period. You're right. He might have had the app. His period was going to come. There's no podcast in the works, everyone. I told everyone that was never, it was never locked in. It was something I was planning, and it just didn't work out, honestly. So, I'm not doing any podcasts, no. In reality, the truth of the matter is that I don't want to go on a podcast and have it, instead of being something positive, turn into something negative. And I'm actually not saying anything against any hosts or anything. It has nothing to do with that. What, honestly, I'm afraid of is, like, when I realized how much trolling I would have gotten, you know, not only me, but my girlfriend as well, I said, this is not worth it, you know? Um. And I thought I would tell a quick story for the hell of it. Um, This is the story of how we kind of almost interviewed DSP, but didn't really. Well, that's DSP. And uh, my boy Hikiko brings it up to me that there's no interview. Nobody's ever talked to this guy. Uh, I only know the guy because of drama. I never followed him. So nobody's been able to get an interview with this guy. And there's a reason why. We'll get to that in a minute, I suppose. And he's like, you know what? If you could uh, talk to him, that would be that would be interesting. He could he could talk about his side. I don't really want to talk to DSP, but you know what? Fuck it. It's like one a.m. in the morning, and we're just having a bit of bants. So I send DSP a message on Twitter, and I'm like, okay. So I've interviewed these two other people. I don't know if he knows about the channel or some or not. Um, would you like to come on sometime? And DSP gets back to me, and this is the reason why nobody's. Uh, ever been able to talk to him, have an interview of him, whatever you want to call it. He says, yeah, within like 20 minutes. He says, yeah, I'll talk to you or I'll I'll do the show or whatever, but you have to pay me because I would get bits and some other, I don't know, Twitch lingo, but basically you make money off donations and there's different names for these things. It's like bits and some other thing. And he's like, uh, it's $800 for a day. Oh my. He's supposed to do one with, like, uh, that fat guy who hung out with Leafy for a little while. I don't remember his name. So, please forgive me, dude, in your podcast. I can't remember. And I, I, I don't know if I'll edit in trying to find your podcast. I don't have the energy right now. I will not lie to you. This is the type of day where I feel like Huey Lewis in the news singing, I want a new drug, one that won't make me sick. Make, it comes to mind. Uh, let's see. He was also going to do one with some other guy who I don't really know. Uh, I'm going to have to find the clip. And lastly, DSP is going to do a podcast or an interview with Wings of Redemption. Now, here's the one that I remember vividly, which was Wings. DSP is supposed to do a thing with Wings at the last minute. Papa Pig Roach pulls out. Oh, dude, he's sick. Oh, Phil don't feel well. So Wings is like, cool, we could do it later. Then DSP goes and streams that day when he's supposed to do the interview with Wings. Wings then supposedly, allegedly gets upset and says Phil was playing him. Phil BS'd him. Phil said he was going to stream with him and then pulled out and streamed later in the day. It was true. Wings wasn't lying. But then, like, that's what led to DSPs and Wings fallout. It was the beginning of the fallout. You don't need the whole lore there. Supposed Battlefield beta playing together that never happened. Nobody got time for that. I don't give a shit if DSP doesn't want to play. Seriously. I don't care. I offered the invitation. If he doesn't want to play, he doesn't want to play. You guys are making a bigger deal. You're creating drama right now. There's no drama. I don't like that video I made last week. That was the first video I ever made about you, even though I've known about you for many years. It, I, I'm not like a, as you might call it, a detractor channel. Um... I, I, no, I'm absolutely not. not. That's that's honestly one of the reasons why when I saw the video, I was like, this guy is not someone who constantly rags on me. He, you know, I watched the video. Yeah, you took some some shots at me. Everyone has, right? Yeah, so yeah. it didn't offend me, and I was like, you were actually being honest and upfront, and you were analyzing it from kind of a third party standpoint that was fair about these asshole independent media bullshit. You know, trying to attack me. Phil only really did this with uh, the quartering. We're breaking this down for real. This is usually what the Gautopia News Network does. Sorry, GTG. <laughs> I would much rather this be you than me. D 
GSP only did this interview because he thought he could possibly weasel something off of Jeremy in the quarter link. For real. DSP figured, I'll do the interview, and he did his retrospective stream literally the same day. All right, this was planned out. DSP is hoping new people come in, you know, the flow of new money and people being interested in seeing Phil's just an all right guy, which is what you would get from this interview if you know nothing about DSP. Yep, field. 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 Oh, wow, it's four events. It's four and track, too. Yeah, the long jump. Huh? Three. Three player. Three player turn based. Okay. Right, right. Should I still be Eggman? Oops. Oh, Sorry. Boy. I pressed B by accident. Oh, my bad. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll stay with I will say this about DSP. He can be somewhat charming for five seconds in the right dosage. You see, he seems like a normal guy throughout this interview. But if you spend any time watching Phil, the whole facade comes crumbling down. Like with his whole pro Jared call out. He went through this whole new PR spin. Oh, people on the internet like me ever since my pro Jared hot takes. Gets 15,000 retweets all of a sudden he thinks he's got a new life. Take note that when pro Jared was being canceled, DSP was at the forefront of nibbling on Jared's bones. The second Destructor came from DSP, it was stupid and a waste of time and people are hateful and so on. Just remember that. It's okay when Phil does it, but it's not okay when you do it. Um, earlier today, I fully and formally addressed on my pre-stream, um, you know, the whole situation that happened with me on Twitter last night and yesterday, it's still unfolding. We've still got people going crazy tweeting about it. Uh, as of right now, my one main tweet that's been super popular has over 15,000 likes and 4,000 retweets, while the other tweet that I made has about 5,000 likes and, like, thousands of retweets. Uh, big you, big content creators are coming out and saying, wow, this is, you know, this is a cool situation with, for Phil. And is this Phil's redemption arc? This is just pretty hilarious because the way I say it is I, there's nothing to redeem. Like, to, the people who think there needs to be a redemption arc basically have never watched me or don't know the truth about me because I know, you know, the things that people say about me and shit were never true to begin with. The lie detector test determined, Ralph. That was a lie. People were contacting me and saying, oh my God, like, did you actually wait three years to strike back at this guy? So I said, all right, you know what? This is the time and place to do this because I've been biding my time. I seriously, ladies and gentlemen, have been biding my fucking time for years. I've been waiting for this moment. Because everyone wanted to make me the joke. Now is the time. Powers yet. That's right, Daniel. Just remember, Daniel, it's okay every once in a while to use your powers, but never fully cheat. Never go full. I'm not going to say it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. Training since we got here. It's too easy. It's too easy. I can't take those easy pot shots for me. They're too easy. That's like lowest common denominator for me. I'm not going to say it. I'd rather I'm not going to say it. Hang out with their new friends. Well, because we need to fit in if needed. What? I can't believe someone would possibly cheat. What kind of a person would cheat? I mean, you'd have to be the lowest human form of existence to be a cheater. A dirty, rotten cheater. For context, DSP's WAF was cavorting around with Big Daddy Phil behind the back of her boyfriend, who we all call Subaru Man. I would go on the Cali forums and pull up proof and all these snapshots and whatnot, but you know what? I don't care enough. It just shows you what a dickhead Phil is. That's a guy who is the epitome of living in a glass house, and he's not throwing rocks. He's got an airsoft gun. What do you mean? Come on. Don't go <laughs> down. You're showing off in front of Finn. You want him to find out? Finn is cool. He wouldn't tell anybody. You don't know that. <laughs> You're gonna get busted. Everyone's now. freaking out in the stream chat because they said that. It's funny. Use your power responsibly. Don't use it. <laughs> don't use it in an abusive manner and don't cheat. Remember, Daniel, learn from the internet. Low profile. Yeah. Keep a low okay. profile. We're Whatever cool. you do, don't be like. Li no, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say know. it. It could be way worse. <laughs> We're making cash, you know. Does a stream debunking. Years of the haters and whatnot. Oh my god, I hate that I know all this shit. It's useless information. 
You're not getting into Cambridge with this information, you know? I wanted to hit an 11-year-old girl. You're right. I just wanted to just, you know, punch a girl right in the fucking face. I cop up to that one. No! What the fuck are you talking about? And there was a girl on there who obviously should not have been playing VR chat unsupervised. Why the fuck her parents are letting her play VR chat? The world of disgusting people going in there saying swears and sexual things and all kinds of fucked up stuff, right? Can I please go in the waiting room? Sure, where is the waiting room? Right behind you, idiot. You click on that. I'm 11. You're 11? Good, now I'm away from that annoying fucking bitch of a kid who I would have slapped in real fucking life if they talked to me like that. <laughs> I would have fucking pimp slapped that shit out of that. <laughs> what the fuck? Now, if I had actually said on stream I want to beat up an 11-year-old girl, do you think I'd be on Twitch today? DSP dedicates a whole stream to telling the new people who found him through the tweet how all this information on him is wrong and it's lies, rumors, and slander, blah, 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 blah. And literally, these people come back for the next stream, and they get a whole dose of real DSP, and they all leave. Now he's back to struggling to get past 400 viewers, depending on what he's playing. Point being, this was all a media blitz for DSP. He thought he was going to get some new people in on his $1,000 tip goal for the retrospective stream. Now, if you don't know what the hell the retrospective stream is, it's where you literally watch DSP. Watch DSP. And then he gives director's commentary on his content. Phil, Phil, are you okay, Phil? What's wrong, Phil? Wake up, wake up, Phil, wake up. Wait a minute, I know what will work. Okay, here we go. Here it is, a reference. Okay, we, we just we just watched this earlier today. It's a reference to when he knocked my camera over and played Start the Party. But you see what we did? It's us now. It's not us from back then when we originally played Start the Party in, what was it, 2010? It's us in 2012 replaying it. I got the beard, see? The camera! He's gonna knock the camera over! <laughs> not again, you asshole! I knew that would work. Why were you stuck on a couch, though? Huh, you know, it's kind of funny. I remember this <laughs> really sh So essentially, you watch videos from like 2010 with John Rambo and whatnot, where he tells you these boring stories and he occasionally laughs at his own jokes. He gives you the goat laugh. No, that's not right. That's like Mickey. I can't do it. It's bad. Fuck me. Trying to attack me. And I was like, this guy actually is like legit. Like, this is a, a fair video about me. Out of all the stuff that gets made about me, <laughs> very rarely do I get a fair video made about me. So that's why I can't. See, the Cordelin didn't know anything about DSP. That's why it was a fair video for DSP. I did a video on the same subject. Notice how DSP ain't talking to me. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was funny that... Um... You know, I, I when <clears throat> when I saw those articles came out, it was like, oh, uh, DSP says some racist shit, and then they they post to like videos from two years ago or something like that, um, of you ba essentially doing like Ching Chong Bing Bong, which is by the way done by every mainstream media, <laughs> you know, person in the last ten years. So you know, it's not like you were saying anything. In particular, you know, anything crazy offensive or anything like that. Well, I'll start with. So, you know, hey, I'm a YouTuber too. I'm a content creator just like you. What are your plans for for post YouTube, you know, or or post streaming? Or have you even thought of that? Oh God, Jeremy, why did you open this can of worms? Do I have to hear about the five to ten year plan again? God, Jesus, mother. I'm about to hang myself because I know what he's going to say. I, I'm going to tell you what he's going to say. He's going to talk about how he's going to try and find a job in five, ten years. I don't know how you figure at 50, you're going to jump back in the job market, Phil. What are you going to do? You better start looking now, homie. Don't go out there with you 50. And then they're like, okay, uh, Phil Brunel, what are your job? Uh, do, what, are you, what are your experiences? Snort. Well, I ran a semi-successful business. If you ask DSP, his business is successful. I don't know how you have 
a business that needs this many loans. I'm not even getting into the loan lore. I'm not doing it. Please, God, give me strength not to talk about it. Then Phil will probably talk about at some point how he wants to open a restaurant. You might wonder why does he want to open a restaurant. Occasionally, DSP makes his famous Italian pasta sauce. It's so famous you never heard of it and he only makes it for himself. That's usually how, you know, famous pasta sauces start. I haven't thought of that. <laughs> so, so have you thought, have you given any thought to like, I mean, I think about it, right? Like, especially because I don't have a streaming presence like you do. I just have YouTube. And I know like if you're on YouTube, you have maybe a year or two. If you're not DSP, like <laughs> most, most YouTubers have a pretty small window. So have you given any thought to like, you know, what, what the fuck am I going to do after all this? Or, you know, how does that thought process go? Yeah. You know, when I, first of all, when I started, I never wanted to do this for a living at all. Oh no, not the fucking, ah, no, no, Phil. Don't you dare tell me that damn story again of how you lost your job and you too wasn't something you planned on doing but your job fired you and you could fall back on youtube and you did so much at your job you worked overtime they they put him in the revolutionary dude of excellence program <laughs> he worked with helicopters or something there's one point on one stream maybe a month or two ago where he was talking about his helicopter company worked with donald trump all the time and Donald Trump never paid them on time. I'm not going to look for the clip, dude. DSP has bajillions of hours of trash. It's like I try to sift through trash to find garbage. Even a raccoon can only do so much trash shifting, dude. Trash sifting. Oh, God, I know he's going to talk about it. I know it. What else is he going to say? I, I can feel it in my bones. It's like... I'm getting a premonition of everything Phil's gonna say. This was only, I wanted to do this for a hobby and then I lost my full-time job. Out of nowhere, I got laid off, blindsided. And I just had this YouTube thing going on on the side for like two and a half years that had- Dude, I'm gonna tell you right now, DSP tells this story at least once every two weeks in a pre-stream. It's like, I can't tell you Disney songs that I grew up with as a boy, but I could damn near tell you DSP's famous story of how he became a youtuber damn near verbatim i can show you the world in 2010 i lost my job i was completely blindsided and i did youtube as a hobby for two years and i didn't even get paid the first two years i did youtube no shit sherlock most people did youtube for more than two years and didn't get paid the people doing youtube right now for more than two years ain't getting paid you are not exemplary for this that had kind of blown up and gone viral uh, this is I back said, like 2012, 2013. DSP has never been viral. He had one video that went viral. It was a KO gaming and it was Homefront the Revolution is the worst game I've ever played. When that video hit like over a million, it got really popular and actually started drumming up traffic for DSP. He literally took a vacation, not even a week ago. Within a week, DSP talked about that video again in his retrospective, I think. And he talked about how that video made him thousands of dollars. A video getting a million views for me does not get thousands of dollars now. DSP made so much back when ad revenue was good. And the fact he didn't save a dime tells you all you need to know about this man. Forgive me. I could kill myself for knowing this. If only I could retain school information like I retained useless DSP facts. Era, right? Actually, even before then, I lost my job in October of uh, 2010. Okay. And so we're talking real old school. This was before like you could even monetize gameplay videos yeah, on YouTube. Yeah, they yeah. wouldn't even let you put ads on them yet. And I lost my job. I was like, what am I going to do? And I already had this YouTube channel that had a good following, but it was only for gameplay. And I was like, shit, I can't monetize that. What do I yeah. do? So I had a vlogging channel. <laughs> I was doing stupid crap. I was making food that was terrible food and, you know, just dumb stuff just to have some variety. In my if you really want to see DSP's old stuff, it's still up on the Internet if you care. Wait till you see this revolutionary, interesting content. If you watch DSP's old stuff, the fact he got where he was was because nobody else was really doing it. He was at the ground floor, all right? It was like Bitcoin had just dropped, DSP was there, and he got a couple Bitcoins. And then instead of holding on to them and cultivating them, he got rid of them the second there was a shred of value. Contact, so maybe I can monetize that. So I did, and because people felt so bad 
about me doing you know, losing my job. They actually like went nuts on the ads and I made like a ton of money in a couple months, which is like one of my first controversies was that I got kicked out of Google AdSense within two months because they claimed that I did like invalid click activity when I didn't. It was because my fans were like so supportive of me and felt bad that I lost my job that they yeah. were clicking the crap out of my ads. But bullshit artist. I say again, bullshit artist. DSP is a fucking liar. The lie detectors determined that was a lie, Felt. Dude, there's video all over the net and people saved it. Like, uh, David Davison's probably where you'll find this video the easiest. You could probably look up Mr. Huff stuff if you want to, you know, look, because there's literally a decade of trash you gotta sift through to find the right piece of garbage you want. DSP actually goes on his camera when he reveals himself, the young piglet. <laughs> he goes out there and he goes, I just want to say thanks a lot to everyone. Um, I hope to entertain you in the future. Please go to my partner channel, The King of Hate HD, and click on the ads that show up on the videos there because hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, that actually starts giving me some, some money back for what I'm doing. I mean, it's not cheap to do what I'm doing. I bought a lot of games, a lot of equipment, and now I have my own condo, which is basically my studio, to do whatever the hell I want. You know, which is this channel, The King of Hate HD, and basically how much you guys participate with this channel, if you know what I mean. Uh, I'm not allowed to come out and just say, uh, you know, how you can do that, but anyone who's accustomed to YouTube and how the partner channels work, I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. Come on, Phil. Come on. You're bullshitting, bro. See, thank God the quarterly didn't have me for this. The interview would have ended right there, because I would have I called him on this. I'd be like, you're bullshitting this video. Dude, this video. Even when R. Kelly got nailed for all his sexual escapades and they had video, they, I don't even think they showed the video, but whatever, he did the video. You can't go, that's not me. I didn't do that. <laughs> it's taken out of context. Come on, bro. The balls Phil has is maybe, as Tevin says, Phil puts himself under pignosis and remembers history differently. But oh, I'm only six minutes in. Oh, his fans were not rabid enough to click the ads. He had to beg them, by the way. People weren't, like, going... It wasn't like DSP was the Beatles. DSP's talking right now like he was a K-pop fucking star. All right? <laughs> DSP remembers himself as such a glowing light. I bet in his mind, Twitter, he used to have DSP stands. People who pretended to be Phil because they loved him so much. Oh, my God. Phil lost his job. I have to click every single ad so he makes money. Dude, he even had a PayPal donation link way back in the day. Phil was constantly trying to get that money. And he didn't save it. That's the moral of the story, children. You get any money, save it. And make sure you pay your taxes. In fact, overpay. So that way they leave you the hell alone. <laughs> then in 2011, I got partnered with Machinima. And that's how I was able to start monetizing my gameplay videos. And I was rest in like peace, by the way, load. Machinima. Yeah, you outlasted them too. Another, another, oh. yeah, another person that DSP has outlasted. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a whole other story for another day. I, I was one of the people who stayed with them the longest after years of people telling me to leave them and ba abandon them because they saw the the warning signs of them being a bad company and falling apart. But I stuck with them almost till the very end until basically they mistreated me. And I was like yeah. the last guy. I was like, I've stuck up with you guys all these years. You're going to treat me bad. I'm out of here. Okay. The, the DSP machinima lore. Oh, I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to have to talk about it. Oh, my God. Where's Tevin when you need him? DSP stuck with machinima because they paid him well. All right. He jumped to machinima. They, in fact, they overpaid DSP for a hot minute. They're underpaid me or overpaid me. There was one time Machinima, I'm not even kidding you, this is a funny one. They paid me three times more than what they were supposed to pay me one month. Then they realized their error, and for three months they didn't pay me at all. <laughs> they fucked up internally, they calculated way too much, and then they decided not to pay me at all. So, thank God when I got that giant sum of money out of nowhere, I questioned them rather than saying, oh, it must have been a good month this month, and went and spent it, and then next thing I know, I have no income for three months, right? But they peri periodically have these issues. There was one time, uh, many years ago, this was like three, four years ago, where all of a sudden they just sent me a lump sum of money. I said, what is this? And they said, oh, well, uh, apparently there was a miscalculation on YouTube of your views. We actually owe you thousands of dollars. I was like, sounds good to me. They overpaid him with his contract for his views. Back then, you used to get paid per view, not per watch minute and bu bullshit like that. 
once again, making bank. You know, if you need any proof, the dude has a condo in Connecticut that cost an arm and leg. And while having this condo that he was still paying for, DSP goes across country and moves him and his woman into a gated community while also paying an absorbent price for a place in Connecticut. Who in their right mind would do such a thing unless they were balling that hard? DSP had the mindset of like a rapper. DSP was both yin yang twins. <laughs> like for real. Now, Machida was overpaying this motherfucker. They realized it because DSP's popularity was waning. They renegotiated his contract like three times and paid him less and less and less. DSP stayed in there. People go, DSP, you should leave Machinima and try and get a better contact. Dude, snort. Machinima still pays the best. I've looked into it. Machinima still takes care of me. People say to me, why are you still with Machinima? Partnered networks are a thing of the past. Well, two reasons. Number one, because I'm with Machinima under a managed partnership. I have a lot of protections from things like content ID. But, in all honesty, the real reason I'm still with Machinima is because of this right here. Because they, they deep dive the data, they find out what's going on, and they go to bat for me. They've done it multiple times. When I had false copyright strikes two years ago, they were right there. They had a whole meeting with YouTube about it and got it cleared up very quickly. It was supposed to take two weeks. They got it cleared up within a few days, right? They're, they, they take care of me, man. They do, you know? Like, uh, I can't complain. They really do a good job. Of taking care of me and, and always i've been with them for eight years and i never you know never ever have i really thought about leaving them because not only do they have this kind of service for me but they also have the most the best contract of anyone i've looked out there for other partnership networks and opportunities not one company has ever offered me what machinima does for me with the contract that i have with them why would it be a no-brainer for me to leave machinima have content id matches up to ass make less money and not have anyone to go back to bat for me imagine if i wasn't with machinima right now guess what i'd be doing packing everything up look pack this microphone up youtube's over it's done the party's over everyone youtube party hashtag youtube party is over and fuck this guy is mr Av everyday average average man even with machinima they got him fallout 4 before most people he got like a review copy instead of going to liana's brother's wedding dsp then lies to people and says oh the wedding's next week doesn't go to said wedding and stays home to play fallout the man didn't mind getting perks when it came so whenever he complains about streamers getting a game early and squealing on twitch it's because he's not getting this treatment that he's angry frankly let's be real any one of us loves special treatment for god's sakes ridge sent me a wallet i was happy as a pig and shit <laughs> I was like, yes, I don't have to buy it. Oh my God. Oh, I'm doing so well, mama. Girls won't talk to me on the internet. Don't matter. I got a Ridge wallet. So point being, back to Machine Mom, I'm losing my mind. I apologize. This video is going to be so long. Only like 10 people actually watch it. DSP goes to Machinima. Oh my God. I can't fully remember how it happened. But something went wrong with DSP and Machinima. DSP then demands to talk to a manager. The manager is gone. The guy he used to talk to. The, so the person he was dealing with was like, listen, uh, we're, we're dealing with your problem. Mr. Brunel will get back to you. DSP decides he isn't happy with the service. So he tries to go over the head of his contact at Machinima and demands better treatment. Driving it as a priority, okay? So they get a quick little one-off quick answer and that's it. Oh, we got it. Let's send that back to Phil and hopefully that'll appease him. No, if I can't pay my bills, you telling me you don't know what the issue is isn't going to fucking appease me, Okay. So I went back to them again and I said, well, this is not acceptable. This is unsatisfactory. I need you to escalate this issue to management. And I literally said, I said, I feel like you've insulted me. And therefore, I'm going to be honest with you. I want you to escalate this issue to management. I don't care if it's your manager, if it's the CEO of the company, whoever it is, they need to be aware that this is an issue going on with YouTubers and people under your partnership program. <laughs> and... I want you to know that if you feel that this is how you're going to treat me as a partner, I don't want to be with you anymore. And I said that in black and white writing in this message to them. The next day, I got a message from Machinima saying, and it was from the same guy, so again, it went against my wishes. We have decided to execute our right to end uh, a partnership with you on all of your, your channels. Cats get fancy fees. You get strawberries. You little bitch. DSP talking all that good shit. For those who know DSP, he did the same thing with, what was it, Viscont? 
Viscount was probably the only person in the FGC that could actually fight. So him and low tier God started stuff with Viscount and found out this dude could actually drop a motherfucker and all of a sudden back down from a fight. That's a whole different lore. Literally the next day after telling Machinima to go fuck itself, Machinima contacted DSP and said, we're canceling your contract effective immediately. DSP goes into full panic mode. He makes his stream. Oh, I just got fired from Machinima. Guys, uh, I haven't felt this nervous since I lost my job in 2010. And he goes right back into that goddamn spiel about this job that happened 10 years ago. Get over it, man. Jesus Christ. Back in late 2010. So for those of you who are not longtime viewers, aren't aware of my full history on YouTube or anything like that, or what's, what's happened with me over the years. Oh, my words. Oh, what are you we do? fucking go. I worked at this job for about five years and YouTube was always my hobby. I never try, even thought about monetizing videos or, you know, back then there was no live streaming like this. Point being, he starts trying to appeal to people. He's, he's wiggling, he's wobbling, he's nervous. I don't know what to do. I can't monetize my videos because AdSense has a thing against me because this is some stupidity on Google's side that is run by nerds in Silicon Valley. Once again, we loop back to DSP telling people to click ads. That's why his AdSense was locked. Theory is he was using Pandalee's AdSense for this. Whatever, who cares? He got around the BS one way or another. Frankly, you'll find out the more you learn about DSP, he's the architect of his own demise. Much like an attractive girl with big dreams, little talent, and little go-get effort. You know, you know those girls. The ones too lazy to make anything happen and thinks it should be handed to them. DSP's a male thought. Let's go. But anyway, um... Yeah, yeah like, I know I they, never... they had a, a, an interesting reputation, you know, that the, you're right. They they profit out of, off of Machinima is trash and DSP stayed with Machinima because they gave them the most money. And that's all DSP cared about. A lot of creators in the beginning that I mean, shoot, I've been on YouTube so long that I don't know. You probably remember this, too. Remember, you needed like 10,000 subscribers before you could have your own channel banner. Remember, you right. get like you could, you know, like back mm -hmm. in the good old days. Um, but then I remember Machinima back then was, you know, everybody wanted, it's the only way you can make money. Right. You had to, you had to be with someone to monetize anything really, or gameplay at, or gameplay in particular. Cause in 2011, if you weren't with a partnership company, you couldn't make a dime on a gameplay. Game. And that's what I was known for, you know? Yeah. But anyway, to get back to, back, get back to your original question, like. I never planned on doing this for, to make any money. Like it just, I fell in my lap out of nowhere overnight. I was like, oh crap, this is amazing. I'm making more money now than I ever did at my office job, you yeah. know, for five years that I was working there. It wasn't overnight, believe me. DSP held on to this like, he held on to this like grim death. They laid me off and now I'm making like so much more money. It's crazy. Of course, we all know that bubble didn't last. It burst and right. you know, now everything is so bad on YouTube. Um, you know, long-term for me, that, let that be a lesson to you. DSP was on the ground floor when YouTube was paying people for practically putting trash on YouTube. And he didn't save a dime. See, the bubble burst, DSP is like, like I said, he's both Yin Yang twins. He's had money rolling in and he's just big willy style. Big trips with Leanna, five star hotels and whatnot. Supposedly flying everyone around to cons and whatever. DSP was living large. Oh, there's this great clip, dude of like uh, Rambo and Howard. Once again, you don't know who these guys are. They used to be the people who streamed with DSP. They were part of Project 7, probably, arguably, the golden age of DSP. And there's a theory that DSP predicted his own future in Project 7, where he is now basically playing games on stream that he hates and he's bad at for a little bit of money. It's actually quite interesting, really. It's like a Simpsons moment. Anyway, Howard and Rambo did one podcast explaining to people why they don't fuck with DSP anymore. And that's because DSP didn't really pay them well, according to them. And according to DSP, he overpaid everybody. The man was Big Daddy Warbucks. In half, right? I get half of that. But for instance, like if it's March and we do videos in March, I will get a percentage of what was made in March. That does not include residuals like for months coming up. Like for instance, if those videos make more money in April or or, or uh, June or July, okay? Like that doesn't include that. So whatever was made in April for that month, that's what I would get. It does not include streams or whatever other money comes in, right? 
Yep. This went on for a little while. And again, not exactly 50% if you throw it out there, but this goes on for a little while. Then he says to me, Machinima isn't sending me reports anymore, so I have no idea. I have no idea of the, the amount of money that we're making on the co-op. I have no way of figuring it out. So I can, I can no longer figure out this percentage that we agreed on. So I basically just go, okay, listen. Throw me $100 every time I come down. Okay? And the way I come to this number is because round trip is about two and a half hours of driving. Right? I'm there the entire day, and uh, I have to buy a meal at some point. So give me a hundred bucks to kind of cover my expense. You also have to consider, you know, these are days like I'm, I'm not going to work because my job, and I'm, in, I'm an independent contractor. So I'm not going to work these days. So if you really do the math, uh, with gas and food and uh, wear and tear in your car, you know, a hundred dollars every time you come, you're not exactly profiting there. And, in, and including not going to or working at a job which will actually make you more money than, than this, you know. Yep. So just to flat out say you got 50%, it's, uh, it's far from true. It's far from the truth there. Like, it's ha- I guess it's half-truth. It's a half-truth? Is that what you would say? Yeah, it's a half-truth. You know? Um, so when people want to throw their stuff out there, man, all like you went to conventions and uh, we paid for things. Again, like you go to conventions, you got to take time from work, which is I'm not getting paid for work. Um, and we went to conventions, and he's got a, an injury. He has a back injury. So I would go and I would carry things. I would uh, film things. Uh, I did all the driving, as you, as you know, <laughs> uh, and do whatever I could to help. I was, I was coming as, not, it's not just like, hey, Phil, take me on this trip. And I'll fuck around and I'll sit by the pool, you know, as, uh, you know, came as basically to assist him in his business, as he likes to call it. 50, 60 hours a week on getting this shit edited to try to pump it out with these unrealistic timelines. So naturally what's going to happen is people are just going to get uh, burnt out, mm. which which ended up happening. Couple of that with the fact and and again, we don't want to say we don't want to talk too much about it, but couple that with the fact with money, you know, yeah. these guys are putting all this time and effort into it, into this fucking thing, and what do they get? Gugats. That's what they got. Because yeah. when you think about it, right? You would think, oh, he, you know, because people are when when I say this, people are going to come back and say, well, you know, Phil promoted their channel, and that's all they wanted. No, 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 no. Here's the here's the bottom line, right? You would think out of the kindness of your heart, you would go ahead, damn man, these guys are putting all this time and effort in this thing. It's not the kindness, it's just what's fair is fair. What's fair is fair. Let me let me throw them a couple of bones. Whatever the case may be, throw them a couple some money here and there, some some percentage of the profits, and this and that. So what is what ends up happening? John and I are talking about this. And John says, I'm gonna talk to him. So what does John say? John goes up to him and says, dude, you, you know, throw him some money, man. These guys, the, if you throw him some money, they'll continue. If not, they're going to stop. Yeah, and that's a great point because, like, anytime there is a yeah. problem, I always do address it right to his face. Yeah. So <laughs> which, is not, goes, which is not, be, which is so not being said now. What does he say? He uh, has the audacity to say, oh, um, they didn't I, – I told them or I asked them if they wanted money and they, and they denied it. That's a fucking load of shit. Okay, so – Because I talked to them afterwards uh-huh. about it. So it probably still was a lot of work for them. I don't think it was much work for us, uh, despite what Phil would talk about how hard the day was. It's such a no, it wasn't. Day. It wasn't hard. It wasn't hard for us. It was hard for them. Yeah. I mean, it was one day, one day of filming. Um, yeah. Maybe seven hours. Do you value money more than our friendship? Because if that's the case, then why am I even here? Right. You know? All right. So and- let me ask you, did you get anything out of the Project 7? First of all, let's – yeah, we're going to talk about that. Not, I didn't get shit out of Project 7. So no one got paid. Now, here's the thing. I got paid. John got paid. I got my percentage. Yeah. There was a, there, at that time period, there was a point where my car had broken down and I needed to get – actually, I bought I – yeah, I got a used car. I bought another car at that time. So I go, Phil, listen, I'm not coming to your house 
because I can't. I have no car. Uh, if you want me to come, throw me my percentage from the Project Seven, and I'll use that cash towards a new a new car. And so yep. I got my money. But there's you know three other people, you guys, that got zero money. Okay, um, and again, it's not millions of dollars here. It's just it's whatever is fair. But it's but. fair it, because as friends, you, you would expect to be treated with respect and. Oh, you did. You tried hard on this. But this is here, your cut. Here's the thing. Since we're a team, as you said, and we all did it together, and you know, it's not one person. Uh, it should be fair. It should be divvied up. To okay. add on to what you were saying, yes. Okay. To add on to that, so what happens, right? We go ahead. He doesn't. We don't get our cut, which is whatever at this point. But we start showing up to your house, and what do we see? The guy starts buying figurines. Starts buying all this ridiculous shit that there's no need to buy. He Then we show up to his house one day and what does he have in a fucking driveway? A BMW. So how the fuck do you think I feel and how do you think these guys feel after the fact? Mm. Was there, is that, is there anything, you know, do you, do you not understand how this burns people when they put all their freaking hard work into this and you're making all the money and the glory and none of us ain't making shit? Yeah, it's it's more about yeah, it's more about respect and being fair. It's about okay. respect, man. You have no respect for your friends, for your family. You don't give a shit about anybody but yourself. Drag her, slay her, sipping on that true tea, hunty. Oh. Gag. <laughs> you go into Phil's apartment. It's loaded with expensive one thousand dollar collectible figures from his sideshow, and he's telling me he's broke. Oh, Phil, I gotta have to look for that clip, dude. Fuck me. I absolutely love having an audience that cares about what I say and do on a daily basis. Like, I never thought in my life I would have anyone who give a shit about what I cared about, you know, anything about a game or anything about any opinion about anything, right? DSP only has like three or four whales, dude. Everybody else is just there for God knows what reasons. Most people watch detractor streams. Most people watch Tevin commenting over DSP playing games, and that gets like 1,500 views on average while phil fluctuates between 250 and 400 depending on the game these are dark days right it's pretty awesome to know that there's hundreds of people thousands of people on my youtube channel on a daily basis that want to know what i'm up to what i'm playing what's my opinion on a game what's my opinion on this or that um so i don't want to like ever say that in my life i would quit doing this outright but it's yeah. pretty pretty unrealistic to expect that you could ever do this your whole life you know that's that's insane this is going to, just like everything else, it's going to get fade out. It's going to become yep. played out. This will be the next new big thing. And even in the 10 year, 11 years now that I've done this, you know, I went from being a guy who recorded with a camera, not not even like live streaming or direct capture. I had an actual camera, a digital camera. There's money in YouTube, dude. The thing is, you got to do what YouTube approves of. That's the trick now. Before, there was money in YouTube, way more money. And you could do what you wanted. It was literally YouTube. Now it's kind of like corporate tube where if you're not politically correct and in, you know, the the far left leaning, nobody wants to bother with your ass. And now you find out even the gay people caught catching hell. But in, then again, you know, I thought all the gay people were just complaining as usual. You know how the LGBTQ is, the alphabet people, as Dave Chappelle says, everything sets them off. They're getting the same treatment I'm getting. The difference is I'm like, I'm going to work around this. They're like, we're sowing discrimination. I forgot my point that I pointed at my TV and was recording videos with a memory card, you know, yeah, yeah. to do gameplay. And then I went to direct capture to live streaming. Then I. Oh, 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 no, you did not Phil. Oh my God. No shit. All right. Here's where DSP. This is where DSP gets off. Lucky this whole interview. DSP got off. Lucky the quarterling knows nothing about this man. And DSP knew that that's the only reason why he did this interview. DSP will never do an interview of anyone that knows half this shit about him that Tevin knows and I know a fraction what the fuck Tevin knows everybody that's a detractive DSP used to be a fan that's scary when your fan base gets so sick of you they spend their time proving you're a shithead you know the whole thing here with Phil talked about how he evolved you have to drag DSP into the future kicking and screaming he did the camera thing for the longest time on YouTube this is what hurt him the most all right at one point, DSP was bigger than PewDiePie. You need to let that sink in. DSP was bigger than PewDiePie. Now, when everybody else, including PewDiePie, moved to direct capture, DSP kept pointing a camera at the damn TV screen. 
He had the money for direct capture. He didn't want to buy it. He had too much money wrapped up in Chung Lee figures or something. His fan base literally had to beg him to go to direct capture. And then by the time he made the transition, it was already too late. The ship had sailed. Most people that were watching him for his gameplay moved on to better content creators that actually gave enough of a crap to put together something worth viewing. DSP is like one of the laziest content creators you'll ever find. The laziest. He always has been. This motherfucker does the very barest of minimum. Oh my god. Oh. Jesus Christ. You know, He's streaming right now with his camera at 480p, dude. Which is probably a smart move because Phil is looking rough right now in HD. <laughs> basically gave up on YouTube two and a half years ago, and I'm mostly a primary live streamer now. Yeah. I've evolved and changed so much over the last 11 years. Who knows what it's going to be in the next two, three years? Will YouTube DSP evolves and changes when he can't do the bare minimum anymore. With his very lame videos. Dude, DSP used to spam his channel with 10 minutes clips of videos. And they would be out of order. He would do a playthrough. 1, 2, 25, 10, 4, 3. It was like, what are you doing? The thumbnails, no work. DSP would literally Google a thumbnail. The first thumbnail for a game that pops up, DSP would take it and then paint shop pro a number over it. Jesus, dude, you killed your own career, dude. When that stopped being profitable because YouTube continuously keeps changing because the algorithm sucks and you literally have to be on your toes to keep up with it if you aren't doing what is YouTube approved. DSP just said, fuck it, I'm going back to Twitch. Now, here's the thing. DSP hated Twitch. Why would I go back to Twitch? Where Twitch TV is literally a business model. Based off of begging. I'm not the kind of person that's going to sit here and say, please buy this shirt. Please subscribe. Please do this. Please sub. Please thumbs up the video. Please see my other channels. Phil, just go back to Twitch. Bite the bullet. Go back to Twitch TV and stream there exclusively, and stream like everyone else on Twitch TV, where you do streams that are catered toward your viewing audience, so it's more of an interactive stream between you and your audience than anyone caring about the game that you're playing, and we guarantee you that you'll get subs and you'll get more attention and stuff like that, all right? I have many responses to this, okay? First of all... Bullshit. It's all about subscription, subscription, subs you gotta subscribe, subscribe, get your, get those custom emotes and shit, subscribe, subscribe. That's why everyone over there is all about their subs, subs, subs. There it is. So the tier three is actually the blue, Super Saiyan blue emo. Okay. Pretty cool. I like them because, you know, if you're a normal sub, you get the regular level. Okay. And if you're a tier 2 sub, you get the god level. If you're a tier 3 sub, you get all of them. You get the god and the blue level. Those are exclusive only to the higher level sub. So finally, you at least get something for being the higher level sub, right? So if you are in every time that there's a new update for partners, I get it. And all the emails I get, they have not invested $1 into their actual business to make it better. They don't have higher quality streams. They don't have like much increased server capacity. You know what I mean? All the things you, why can't people stream at 1080p 60 frames per second on Twitch? Because they don't care about that. They don't care about the quality of the gameplay or even the quality of the stream. Why do you think there's so many titty streamers on Twitch who are girls with big ass fucking boobs hanging out and they barely can play a game but they get tons of fucking money on Twitch and Twitch makes out. That's a big demographic for them to make profit because they don't care about the quality. If they did care about the quality, they'd stop telling you, oh, buy a t-shirt. Oh, here's a new kind of chat emote system, an exclusive emote thing and this and that that has nothing to fucking do with the stream. You know, he was sick of Twitch. He was quick to say everything that was wrong with Twitch before he decided to go there to save his bacon, just barely. This video is going to be a thousand years long. It will still be how it is. Will Twitch change? Will Mixer become the next big thing? Who knows what's going to happen? We don't know. Uh, if Mixer becomes the next big thing, Phil will just go over there. How hard is it to create a Mixer profile and then link up your whatever this thing is called OBS to it, dude? He's acting like it's some big exodus. <laughs> Streamers are crossing the dev desert like Moses and the Jews away from Ramsey. Um... And you can't rely on that. You can't rely on that to be steady income. It just sucks that I've kind of now gotten myself into a shitty situation where I'm stuck doing what I'm doing. But my goal is that within say five years, I can get myself out of any kind of financial pressures outside of the realm of me having fun on stream and say, okay, I still want to stream. Dude, really Phil, you having fun on stream? 
I challenge anyone watching this to go watch some of DSP streams. If he isn't raging, he's falling asleep. If the stream is dead silent, I've watched enough DSP streams to know, dude, he's not having fun. The man does not look like he's having fun. And the second, the second it's time to clock out, DSP treats that shit like Fred Flintstone. <laughs> it's like two hour streams over. Yabba dabba do break out the gin. <laughs> Remember, this is the dude who charged people two grand to see a cat. At a 2K mark, you might see Jasper on stream. And the most you ever see of Jasper is his tail. Nine times out of ten, if he even shows up. Oh my god, that's a man having fun. I still want to stream, but I want to have a solid job, a steady job outside of that, that yeah. I can do day daytime. And then maybe I come home and stream two, three hours a night you know, a few days a week and I split my time between them because I know I'm always going to have that following. Like you said, I've got longevity. I've been here 11 years. I'm always going to have some people who are interested if I stream. Bill is only here because he didn't stop. Let's be real. A lot of YouTubers reach a certain point and they're just like, things aren't going very well. You know, this is, it's reached its zenith. It's over. Time to pack it up and move on. That's what happens with a lot of YouTubers. They see the changing of the guard and they don't adapt to it and they just leave because they're probably not big enough or something. It's the belly of the beast. Phil's here because he hasn't let go. I mean, for God's sakes, look at how many subscribers he has and how many views his channel gets. It's like Cinnamon Toast Ken. You know, that dude, one minute, he used to be one of the biggest Minecraft Let's Players out there. Now look at him. He can do a video with T PewDiePie and barely get two to 400K views on a video with PewDiePie. And he has three million subscribers. That's when you just can't let go. It's like a relationship with a girl. She dumps you, hanging outside her window ain't gonna change a damn thing. Unless like you look like Brad Pitt from Legend of the Fall. And one hour a week, other people mm -hmm. come out to see what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, that but there's no way I could do this full, full time. I have to do something different. I know that. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, so a lot of people ask questions like, um, you know, people would ask me this too, and I know how I would answer it, but they're like, you know, what would you even, if you couldn't make money, you know, would you still stream? And it sounds like you answer that basically like, well, sure, but you know, I've got to pay my bills first. Right. It'd be way less. I would, I would, I would have obviously have a job. That would be my main focus, but I would love to do this. Like I used to do YouTube as a two hour hobby. And I <laughs> right, come home and I'm able to do a little bit of streaming. The, the, the difference now is I can actually make money on that two hour stream every night. When back then I was just doing it for, for a hobby. I wasn't monetizing the videos or anything. It was just like a, for two and a half years, I was uploading gameplay videos to YouTube before I ever made a dime doing anything. I knew he'd bring up not making any money on YouTube for two years like it's some sort of amazing harrowing experience. It's almost as if DSP saved the entire human race. There's so many people who stream and don't make... Forget it. Yeah, so. yeah. Was there ever a point, <clears throat> because I'm not like a expert on your on your career, was there ever a point where you, making, where you were making any reasonable money on YouTube? Or were you always kind of just using that as like kind of a a dumping ground for your stream videos. Oh no, dude. DSP was making so much bank back in the day, Jeremy. How do you not know that? He has two houses. Oh no, dude. I was a full-time YouTuber from year 2011 to 2017, early okay. 2017. So you're talking six straight years. My 95% of my income was on YouTube ad revenue. Oh, okay, uh, okay, okay. It was that big. Like my channel was that popular at one point. And the thing is I was- His channel was never that popular. It's just that the pickings were slim back in the day and ad revenue was so monstrously high. Go look at DSP's channels back when he was white hot popular, quotation marks. Popular at one point. And the thing is, I was also, I had a formula that I had figured out that was like the sweet spot for making money with ads on YouTube. That if you yeah. had a certain length of your video, a certain amount of ads on each video that you could like make a good amount of money. <sighs> just doing straight playthroughs. You know, I didn't have to do these long edited videos like people were doing. I could just upload parts of a video game playthrough and I was making really good money doing it. Yeah. Um, but then right there, he just told you he was lazy as fuck. Right there. He just told you the right formula. His formula was uncut raw gameplay that he cut up in chunks to make sure that he got the maximum amount of views and revenue. He was putting out 10 minute video clips like like a goddamn conveyor belt of laziness and he made sure everyone was monetized he did it on purpose to get the most money when other people put out like a playthrough 
for 30 minutes to two hours, DSP only gave you 10 minute snippets. He didn't even give you a good description of what he was doing. So if there was actually something funny you saw in a playthrough, or I should say playlist, there's no way you'd find it again unless you remembered the exact number. He didn't stop doing this until literally recently, dude. And when I say recently, I mean within the last two years. And then when it happened, then when it happened, when he finally stopped like doing these short little snippet videos, he sits there and goes, well, the people have been asking for it for a long time, and here it is, guys. Like he's doing them a favor. Now, all those people who wanted you to do that, Bell, are gone now. They left. You asshole. That's like dating a woman and then changing your haircut for her. But she already broke up with you five years ago, and you're like talking to an empty dress on a chair. Well, honey, what do you think? You've been asking for this for years, and I've finally done it. When the adpocalypse happened in early 2017, that all changed. Like, overnight, I made 50% less money, and I was like, oh, my God. Like, I yeah. can't do this. So that's when I adopted full-time streaming, and that's what I've been doing for the past two and a half years. <clears throat> yeah, that happened to a lot of us, too. Even even I felt it uh, through so The whole 27... Wasn't there an adpocalypse before that? Because I don't remember making any money in 2017. <laughs> Ain't that bad a bitch? Oh, wait, I wasn't popular in 2017. Whoops. No wonder I made nothing. How do you like that shit? Day late, buck short. No, I, 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 used, to, I used to have a channel where it was just... <coughs> magic. Sorry, I'm getting over a cold. It's cool. Um, I know. If I saw in your video, you were getting over the flu, so... Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I, you know, I used to do, like, Magic the Gathering videos and stuff like that. And, um, you know, it, it, overnight, it cut in half. And... Um, YouTube now seems to favor, you know, multiple uploads, which you do do on your main channel. Um, but gameplay videos just aren't what they used to be. They're just, yep. I, you know, they're just not. YouTube wants to push their live streams. Um, let me let me ask you this. So now that you've been streaming on Twitch, this is one of the hottest questions. Like, whose nudes do you have from Twitch? Like, <laughs> who, what? Who, do, do you have... Whose nudes does DSP have on Twitch? Really? That's not a good question. Once again, the quarterly doesn't know DSP. And on top of that, when I was talking to him privately about this, he let me know off the bat, like, I can't ask personal questions and I can't ask financial questions. And I'm sitting there like, if you can't ask that, there's pretty much no, there's no point in asking DSP anything. <laughs> That's how I feel. Can't remember if I said it or not. But basically, I was just like, oh, God, no, this is going to be bad if it's that way. Like, DSP already handicapped your interview. Imagine, like, if, if, you got to give it to Michael Jackson. You get mad at me for saying this if you want. That whole pedophilia thing was going on. At least Michael had the balls to come into the interview and answer questions. Even though he was saying shit he shouldn't have said. You know, like, Michael, Michael Jackson got more balls than DSP. They're like, Michael, do you feel it's okay to sleep in a bed with children? Why can't you share your bed? The most loving thing you can do is share your bed. And I just, I give the children a bed and I lay on the floor. I sleep on the floor. I hear you are my guest. You have the bed. I sleep on the floor. At least Michael had the balls to just be real. If I was Michael's handler, I would have been like behind the camera doing the like cut off the neck side. Like, no, Michael, shut up. <laughs> we just got out of court, Michael. Mike, please. I feel it's okay if you, an adult shares a bed with the children. You know, and blah, blah, I would let Michael, no, Michael, no. See, he'd still be alive if he hired me. Anyway, Michael Jackson got more balls than DSP. He would at least answer questions right in the middle of the heat when everything is coming down in his head. The king of pop actually took questions. DSP's like, I won't do the interview if you ask me these questions. Like, <laughs> who, who, do, do you have, I, I won't ever, never ask you to name them, but like, has, has, like, where are you, because where are you at with people from Twitch? Do you think you're on, on good terms with them? It's funny you ask that because the, the, the honest answer I could give you is I don't think anyone like on Twitch has an issue with me. I just think that they don't want to touch me with a 10-foot pole. Now, if Jeremy knew anything about DSP, he know DSP is married. And currently, when anything remotely sexual about women come up, DSP immediately goes into, I'm married to the most beautiful woman. I don't need that. Like when he was playing uh, Yakuza Kiwami or whatever, where you're playing the cop, right? DSP, like the stream is like, hey, DSP, you should do a romantic relationship with this girl, see what happens. We streamed no games today, 200 bit cheer, that's the top cheer of the night. I said, would you do at least one of the girlfriend missions? Each girl's unique storyline missions that are pretty funny, don't worry, we won't tell Kat. I have no interest in them. 
Dude, I'm serious now. I'm gonna be very honest, all right? Can I be very honest with everybody here for a minute? I'm 37 years old, I'm married man. I'm a married man. I have no reason to have waifus. I have no reason to do romance missions in video games. I have nice romance in my real life. I don't need simulated fucking romance in my video games, okay? So I have no desire whatsoever to do stupid romance missions in a video game. Not in an RPG, not in a fucking Yakuza game, not in any game. I don't need to do romance missions, it's so ridiculous, you know? Yeah, at one point in my in my life, it was funny or fun to do that stuff. At this point, I have like I don't think I think it's lame. It's cringy. I don't want to do it. It's like not interesting to me at all. Okay. Alright. Gives her the thumb. That's when DSP shows you his thumb and he points somewhere like you're supposed to understand what the fuck that means. <laughs> you could be pointing at a goddamn pillow for all we know. She probably left by now. Point being, I got a wife if I need that sort of romantic engagement. She's there. I don't know why people need to have waifus and have relationships in video games or watch porn. I guess it's because these people have a bad relationship and it's a clear sign of yada yada. And I'm just like, DSP is scared to death of his wife. He is scared to death of cat. Put money on it right now. Hundred dollars. DSP is scared of cat. <laughs> I bet you she watches his stream to make sure he ain't talking to no women. Delbert, I saw you playing a very sexy game today. You didn't talk to, to Betty Ting Pei and Yakuza Kiwami, did you, while she sharpens a knife? N no, dear. I didn't. I swear to God. <laughs> Please don't hurt me. <sighs> Point being, of course, DSP has nobody's nudes. He isn't the boss. Why wouldn't you ask him to name them? It wouldn't be funny without it. And DSP, do you have Photoshop nudes of Pokemane? And the answer, obviously, is yes. <laughs> I remember someone sent me what they thought were new to Pokimane. And I'm like, this can't be real. It can't be real. Pokimane guards her like image like a pit bull at a goddamn chop shot. So I take the fake Pokimane nudes and I send them to Zill. Because Ziltex is like, he's really into Pokimane for those who don't know. And uh, he's probably going to be pissed I said that. I go, Zill, are these nudes real? And he goes, of course they're not real. I've already checked into them, you idiot. <laughs> It's like, oh, please forgive me for not giving enough of a shit to look up Pokimane naked to know if it's real or not. That's what you're here for. Funny you ask that because the, the, the honest answer I could give you is I don't <laughs> think anyone like on Twitch has an issue with me. I just think that they don't want to touch me with the 10-foot pole because of the trolls that follow me around. Yeah, you know? yeah. But I can give you – I'm not going to name any names. There's some examples. Don't There's been that. a couple yeah. people who like I, – I, I was cool with them. Sometimes they would come and hang out on my streams. I would come hang out on their streams. And within a year, they basically told me we can't do it anymore. Your trolls are like invading my fucking streams and harass. I don't even know this is true, dude. I've never seen Phil work with anyone else on stream ever. Ever. The only people I've ever seen him work with were Rambo and Howard. And it was Kekin and uh, I think the black guy who I did a clip of him laughing at DSP's cat reveal. That was it. <laughs> Whenever someone offers to work with DSP or stream with them, DSP always pulls out. I know he was like a mod for some Street Fighter stream once and he pissed off the chat and they got him demodded and kicked. That's about it. So I can't really confirm or deny this one. Passing my viewers and I can't have that. Yeah. So not anything against you, Phil, but I'd rather have it that we don't have a relationship because your trolls are toxifying my content. And I was like, fair enough. I can't. Yeah. How, do you, how can I say anything to dispute that? It's not me. It's not that person. You know how long DSP has had this shitty ass web camera? Look at like the quartering. Look how clear that is. And you look at DSP's video and it looks like something out of, you know, 1998. My God, man. It's this outside force that follows me around like a hemorrhoid on my ass. It's but the headphones he's wearing are $350, by the way. Web camera, HD, less than $80. Now I can't get that. Gamer headphones that are like 350 bucks, you, you need those when you're playing on console. But he never plays online competitively, so why the hell would you need some super surround sound? Let it go. Or else this video is going to be a billion years long. It sucks that that happens, but no, like I don't have any real close personal relationships with anyone on Twitch simply because of that. Like people are afraid to have that association because they know that they get this spillover of bad stuff onto their own content. Well, and if you follow like modern day Twitch, you know, m m 
my answer to a lot of people who were asking me about about that with you, you know, like, wow, the fuck does Phil stay on Twitch? DSP stays on Twitch because he's a partner. Come on, Jeremy, you know that. Partners get special treatment. DSP has been banned before. He was indefinitely banned like a year or two ago. It was right after he did the whole I'll slap a kid fiasco that he later says he didn't do. But once again, we got video of it. He insulted someone in chat who said something about him who was also a Twitch streamer with a purple beard. DSP went in on this guy like you wouldn't believe. He went in on him like I would go in on somebody. DSP just let him have it. DSP got indefinitely suspended. DSP got in line, cried, complained, did a YouTube screen a stream. I, I don't know what I'm going to do, guys. And you know when DSP's nervous? When he's nervous, that back chair shakes like he's in an earthquake. When DSP's fine, it doesn't move. It's a telltale sign of Big Daddy Phil. He'd be great to play poker against because you know when he was bluffing. And then Twitch knocks it down to a three-day ban, then a two-day ban. So, you know, the usual shenanigans. Just on YouTube, I used to heavily police my comments on my videos. Heavily police them to the point where people were like, I don't like watching Phil's videos because I can't comment. When I comment, everything seems like it's super policed and commented on there or, or uh, you know, uh, moderated on there. Yeah. Um, but I couldn't do it anymore. I was a one-man army. I wasn't going to sit there moderating myself. That's the good thing about DSP. Like, if you want to find out the truth about something DSP said, give it time, he'll tell on himself. As GTG would say, uh, give him enough rope, he hangs himself. All day, I had a life. I wanted to make more gameplay. I wanted to do other stuff. I couldn't just sit there. So at one point, I just let it go. And what I noticed systematically is over the years, more toxic people came in, more stuff just kept crapping on the videos, crapping on the videos. To the point where I noticed, like, you know, everything was still good when it came to my my fans. My fans still loved my content and wanted to come see it. But yeah. there was this increasing, like, cloud over my head of people following me around saying negative things. And you're right. I think originally I, I kind of back in the day when it first started, this negative cloud behind me, I reacted to it the worst possible way. I acknowledged it. I complained about it. I said, it's not fair. I whined. I screamed. I made a big tantrum. Oh, wow. All the these guys are jerks. How could they do this? You know, there was this movement on YouTube called This Is How You Don't Play that was created off of yeah. me and yeah. my gameplay. And if I had reacted in a different way to it and probably said, oh, that's funny. That's a funny montage that people made of me. You know, it probably wouldn't have ever blown up to what it was. But they liked the fact that when they made these videos about me that I reacted to them. Oh, they got the, got the reaction I wanted out of Phil. Yeah. And now... Well, there you go. Big ups, Evil AJ. You got a shout out, kind of, but not really. I mean, frankly, Evil AJ deals with DSP so often, ain't funny. He kicks the living shit out of DSP with Blanca and Street Fighter Turbo. So if you really want to laugh, go watch his stream where Evil AJ beats him up, and then Phil just has a rage fit. Out of Phil. Yeah. And now, when he plays a game, it's more about getting him to get angry or fail at a game so we can make another one of these to get attention for us and just keep it just kept feeding itself to become this like organic entity of this. this. Here's what actually happened with this is how you don't play. DSP was always dickish, but the difference was back then there were more people that liked him than disliked him. In fact, DSP was a bigger asshole back in the day than he is now, probably because he learned his lesson. Point being, when the this is how you don't play Metal Gear Solid 2, I believe, or 3 dropped, and people loved it. It was funny. It was actually something DSP never did. Edited his content. If DSP had a brain in his head, he would have saw, this is doing really well. I better swoop in on this. You know, and snatch it up. You know, take the idea. You're bigger than him. You could have ran with it. Took it like a champ. Would have came off good. DSP tried like hell to get the stuff taken down. He even tried to have Machinima help him get stuff taken down. This will be a reoccurring theme with DSP. He does this. He, like, gets upset with a certain group of people, and if he has the power to do something to him, he will. He got Tevin banned from Twitch. He got TXT banned from Twitch. And another person banned from Twitch. And the funny thing, Tevin was banned from Twitch, and he wasn't even streaming DSP. He never streamed DSP on Twitch. <clears throat> and from RFHC5, he cheered and he brought up something. That has to do with someone who's a detractor of mine. Listen, I'm not one to bring them up, give them attention where they don't deserve it. Um, and I'm not going to revel in any kind of disciplinary action that was taken towards someone who's basically made a living off of harassing me constantly for years. So in that regard, I just don't give a shit. But all I could say is this. It seems like Twitch actually is serious about cracking down 
on their rules. You know what I mean? Like, they actually are serious. When they made those changes earlier this year to their terms of service, they are seriously taking it uh, in stride, and they're really, they're really actually enforcing these rules. Even for things that people are not doing on their own site. In this particular case, I believe this is someone who constantly, on a daily basis, steals my Twitch stream and rebroadcasts it on their YouTube channel. And the only reason this person gets any kind of attention on the internet is because they constantly steal my content and basically make negative commentary over it constantly. And of course, you're going to have a certain kind of messed up in the head kind of person who likes that kind of content. I personally am not one of them, okay? And I know that you guys watching aren't either, but there are people who like that shit. And so he illegally rebroadcasts my content every day. And basically, Twitch finally got wind of it and said, well, we don't want someone like you on our site. You're rebroadcasting one of our partnered streamers' content, and apparently he got banned for it. So, good riddance to bad rubbish, you know? You know what? Off to YouTube with you. So, back to the toxic wastes of YouTube, where these people apparently thrive and are immune to any kind of disciplinary action. Um, it's stupid that they are, because this guy literally steals my content every single day and rebroadcasts it on YouTube illegally. Yet somehow he YouTube didn't, never takes action against him. Don't ask me why. All I know is I don't care. I, I do my own thing. But, you know, thank God that Twitch is actually serious about enforcing their terms of service. And they recognized the toxic person and got rid of them. So, as they say, good riddance to bad rubbish. He was like playing a video game, but they nailed him for it anyway. DSP's got a little bit more juice than you realize. Point being, his negativity and trying to police even people making this is how you don't play, pretty much let the genie out of the bottle. You see, the more of an ass you were about it, the more people were going to come down on you for it. Toxic cloud that kept growing and growing. So when I stream now, I realize that that cloud's always there. It's never yeah. going to go away. It's associated with me permanently now, right? It's attached to me permanently. Um, what I try to do is balance it. I can't. The reason why DSP still has detractors is because of DSP. He hasn't really evolved. The only difference between DSP now and what he did on YouTube when he was a full-time YouTuber was he does it live on Twitch. That's it. Nothing has changed. He hasn't evolved. The dude is still an unscrupulous bastard at times. I don't really hate DSP, but I see him for what he is. The guy literally sat there when Leanna left and pretended to be a Twitch dot and basically go, oh, guys, you know, this Christmas. I'm so lonely. Leanna's gone. It's hard, you know, man, being here alone and I gotta do things by myself. I gotta the, the gotta do the laundry alone. <laughs> I gotta I gotta make my own meals. I'm like really Phil. Oh my god. You don't what do you expect? People to be you know to cry a river for you? You know how many men have been broken up with? Phil, meanwhile, was seeing cat secretly while pretending to be single to maximize the amount of money people would give him that's what he was doing that's a dick move it's like a thought move that's what twitch thoughts do dsp implemented the same thing and like i've always said a man can't get away with the same crimes a woman can his fan base got a little pissed then you find out all the money you're giving him you know the cat's flying out to his place all the time now dsp all of a sudden has a move in randomly right after the big tax money gathering where did the money come from for her to move across country to be with you? Where did it come from? It certainly isn't free to move across country and move someone's shit. Don't play with us, Phil. We're not stupid. But he thinks you're dumb. And if you talk about this, you're toxic. You are a detractor. You're trying to destroy Phil. On top of that, Cat was with another guy who we all term as Subaru Man. If you care to look, you can find videos on YouTube of Cat in Subaru Man's car. Like some sort of music video where she's just sitting there uncomfortably while wind blows in her hair and she like looks around. It is the stupidest shit. There's, there's like even d there's deeper lore on Cat. Very deep lore. You can go on the Kawi forms if you want. I just can't go any further. I Wasn't she like in a psych ward or something too? I can't remember, honest to God. You're gonna have to look it up. I'm not looking myself. So yeah, that's the reason why people dislike Phil. The marriage move. Where he all of a sudden is like, I don't have money to marry Cat. I'd love to marry Cat. We're soulmates. Oh my God, she's perfect. No woman has ever done for me what Cat has done for me. And then he goes to Connecticut to see his dying parents. First they were dying. Then they were fine. Then the story was, well, they could die. Then it was like, they're fine. But if I don't see them now, I may never see them again until they die. God forbid. 
the, it's this whole rigmarole this fucker did. Goes out to Connecticut, comes back married, and his mother gave him a large chunk of money for his taxes. And then it's like, well, what about the tax money people gave you? And did you try, oh my god, damn it, I'm in a rabbit hole. And even before he left, he had this big stream. He wanted to raise like a certain amount of money, like $2,000 or something wild like that. So he could go to Connecticut and not worry about his taxes while he's there seeing his parents and blah, 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 right? He doesn't raise the money, but can still afford to go to Connecticut and everything, blah, 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 blah. And then his parents give him the money. So the big stream, the, the money he desperately needed that he had to have to come back to pay the tax man, just it's there, even though he didn't have it. It's just like so many layers of this like minutia bullshit. Then that whole time while he was in Connecticut, everybody was wondering why the fuck does Phil need like a house sitter? Nobody's going to be there. The detractors are like DSP has a pet. He has a cat or something. The detractors always know, sadly. They, they can predict Phil like the goddamn weather. DSP's like, oh, we can't get a cat. We don't have money for the cat. Blah, blah, blah. Nine months later, uh, I have a big positive announcement, you guys. Gets the money. Woo, I have a cat. Everybody's like, we knew you had a cat, Phil. And Phil's like, no, you thought I got a new cat. I had a cat for a long time. Fuck off, dude, you fucker. But his, his, his zonked out fan base are sitting there like, this is a big win, Phil. Congratulations, I'm glad you got the money for such positive news. This is positive news? I got a fucking cat and a dog. Where's my money? You cheap little bastard. It's positive news. All the detractors are upset. No, we're not upset. But look at how dumb you are. You gave a full grown man money. To tell you he had a cat like a little boy. I have a secret. Why don't you give me some pocket change? I tell you. Okay, little Philbert. Here's your money. I have the cat. <laughs> but pretend that's a goat laugh. Because I can't do it. That's why people don't like DSP. Th this is just a handful of things I can remember off the top of my head. This goes back 11 years. That's why you need Tevin to do an interview with DSP. That I watch. I pay to see that. I'd pay a hundred dollar stream fee to watch Tevin interview DSP because he cut this motherfucker up like veal. What I try to do is balance it. I can't say it doesn't exist because there are people who actively will come in my chat and actually are supportive. They'll contribute via, you know, the methods you contribute on Twitch and they'll, they'll help me to keep going. But they're only there to really wait for that moment when I screw up in a fighting game and I swear and I get angry at the person or I overreact in a game. You know, they're waiting for that moment of fail to really latch out. Ha ha, I got him. Now let's make fun of him and stuff. You got to kind of laugh. I wait for the moment when DSP's cat Jasper comes in the room and then bothers something. And then Phil has to take out the spray bottle and he sprays down Jasper like a jaded cop pepper spraying a protester. <laughs> hey, get out of here, Jasper. Go away, buddy. <laughs> Sitting there like they're friends while you spray him in the fucking face. <laughs> I was watching it on stream, dude. I died laughing. I wish they got a brace enough to record it. <laughs> oh my god. You gotta go, buddy. Spray, spray, spray. You gotta kinda laugh with it. You know, and back then, when I first started, like I said earlier days, seven, eight years ago, I wasn't like that. I I thought my shit didn't stink. I was like, how could anyone criticize me or make fun of me? That's not right. Now I'm a different person. Like I've learned over the years. Wasn't it like a few weeks ago when DSP was telling people you can't make fun of him having gout but making racist jokes? are fine like if you can make racist jokes you need to be able to take a joke about gout you know how can you laugh at anyone if you can't laugh at yourself i'd make gout jokes all the time if i was phil i go that's right you little shit i was living so high in the hog i had a girlfriend 10 years younger than me the tightest little butt you ever seen and she was feeding me the most tasty pieces of steak cutlet that's how i got gout you little shit you're probably at home eating mcdonald's and they probably go god phil is vicious today person like i've learned over the years you got to roll with that now yeah. some people say don't acknowledge it at all but the thing is if a lot of people are doing it and you don't acknowledge it at all now it's like they're not going to come back or at the same time what i've noticed is some people if they don't get that acknowledgement it just makes it worse they'll try to find another way to intrude if i just let it roll and pretend like it's a natural part of my stream it doesn't bother people that much in fact That's there's a, a, a few there's a few negative memes that have come up that at first they pissed me off but i realized if i Dude, me and Zill used to get trolls in our stream back in the day. And you know what we did, Phil? We ignored it. Fuck it. Me off, but I realized if I embrace the meme and I make it my own, it's not a big deal anymore. 
Yeah. And so that's what I've been trying to do. I made an emo. I make emotes now in my chat of some of the memes that are negative memes because that way it takes the power away from them and people don't see it as a negative anymore because everyone's doing it, right? Well, then where's the gout meme, Phil? I'm waiting. Yeah. So that's kind of how I've been trying to embrace it in the last couple of years since I've become a full-time streamer is understand it's there, recognize when it's there. Don't make the whole stream about it because there's positive people there who are there to also enjoy my content on a positive level. And they don't want to just hear negative, 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 money, negative the going. whole stream. But if it's there, laugh at it, make a sarcastic comment about it, and move on. Don't dwell on it all the time. But at the same time, when you allow that, that thing to have power – you know what I mean? It gets even worse. And at the same time, if you don't acknowledge it at all, that's a group of people that, number one, could be contributing and they're not because now they feel like you don't care anymore. And number two, that's a group of people that might find another way to hurt you more maliciously behind the scenes because yeah. what they're doing isn't working. So let's find someone another way to screw him. DSP is talking in circles. He does this a lot. Like, I'm starting to phase out because I've never really attempted to pay DSP attention this long. It's actually like erasing parts of my memory. Detractors. And they still have, you know, it's when it starts out great. Look, when this, when I started my YouTube channel, <coughs> I had like a 99% upvote on every right. video I did. Right. <laughs> but over, over the years, you know, you piss a few people off. You Even your most loyal fans are the ones that turn into the ones that really hate you the most, you know, and, um, so then, okay, went from 10. If I had 10 dislikes on a video, I was like, whoa, what the I fuck up? Now, <laughs> if I have like 100, now I'm like, oh, okay. So I, I definitely feel like I understand where that's at. I look at a guy like you and a guy like Wings, and where both of you have been on long enough where you have long kind of – or you have, I'm sorry, a solid group of haters, but you also have – a solid group, but you're still you're still your fans, and where Wings probably Wings, I don't know, he probably has it worse than you. Where like, but he still reacts like old Phil used to react. Mm. If I could talk to DSP, I would say, dude, you got to lean into the meme because eventually it's not going to be as fun to make fun of you because you're like, yeah, I fucked up, you know, yeah, right. whatever, this happened, and I think the quarreling has a point here. I hope I don't forget to add this part. It isn't fun to make fun of Phil anymore. Like, the funny factor is starting to fade, and now it's just kind of getting annoying. You're, like, kind of burnt out. That's why most detractors quit. I mean, look at Memeology. This is the perfect uh, point here. Memeology used to do nothing but Phil stuff. And DSP used to sit there and go, Oh, these trolls, they need me to exist, blah, 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 blah. The day Memeology stopped doing Phil stuff, is the day he soared. He like just blew up. The second he left DSP behind. DSP should technically be grateful to his detractors. Because a lot of them are what makes him still interesting. For I would say I'm an ironic fan. Ironic fan? Is that it? Where it's like you laugh at what the detractors post. But it's getting to the point now where Phil's getting so lame. I can't even sit through the detractor stuff. Because it's just like oh. When is he going to do something funny? Where's my gold dust? <laughs> Where's my fucking gold dust Phil? You better spray Jasper. I'm not entertained. Really, if the detractors left DSP alone, I think that would be the death knell. That would kill him. Like, it would be the end. He would literally lose all presence if they all just decided, forget Phil. It would be over. If not for the Mighty Ds, the Snort Brunels, Tevin, etc., I wouldn't have gotten back into DSP. I used to think DSP suck back in the day. I've been on YouTube for just as long as him, if not longer. And frankly, when my friends would watch him, I didn't get the appeal. And now, I find him funny, but for all the wrong reasons. And that's only because of detractors. Whatever, you know. Um, how do you see, you know, he, he talks about now, uh, there was a recent stream where he was like, basically like, look, I got to turn my haters into payers, essentially. I've got <laughs> to convert. You know, because these are the people that are coming in. He's got several channels that basically are 
100% dedicated to making Monta, and you've got a few of them too. Oh, so, yeah. So, well, how do you approach that type of content now? What, what do you think of these dedicated channels that are basically just memeing on you? I can't wait to hear the bullshit Phil comes up with for this one. Let it rip, Phil. See, I don't, here's the thing. Again, I'm different now than I used to be. When I was a, a full time YouTuber, I was like really pissed off about it. And I would yeah. call these channels out. They're stealing my content. I wish I could take them down, blah, blah, blah. I'm not even like that anymore. Like for me, I don't mind that they exist as long as what they do is, I don't care if you take a shot at me. I don't care if you make fun of me. I don't care if you call me a lol cow. I don't care what the frick you call me. But don't try to actually like hurt myself or my livelihood or my family. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because sadly, there's people who do take it that far. And I hate to say it, but the people who make those channels don't realize that what they're doing is kind of putting the ammo into a group of people who aren't like them. You know, those those guys, they're doing it for laughs. They're doing it to make fun of me and to make... DSP never tells you these things to happen to him. <clears throat> DSP has the same spiel as Anita Sarkeesian had when she was like popular back in 2014 to 16, where she would just randomly show up and tell people, oh... I had death threats against me just before I even came out here to do this interview. Someone threatened to kill me and everyone's like, oh my God, she's so brave. But the thing is, it's not working for Phil because he provides no proof, much like Anita Sarkeesian. On top of that, DSP has gone out of his way to get rid of these channels, even as a full-time streamer. He has had Snort Brunel <laughs> damn near deleted a couple times. But then Snort Brunel turns his main page to private and then uses Snort Brunel too. <laughs> He has gone after a couple people, Mighty D, etc. There are screen caps of private conversations between DSP and some of his most loyal followers at the time where he wanted them to help him flag channels to get them taken down. Will I find these like screen caps? Maybe, maybe not. It depends on how much effort I want to put into this video because God of mercy, it would take a long time. This is going to be a very long video and I lament every fucking second of it some some <laughs> popularity get popularity by my on my expense right yeah laugh you know they're, they're not laughing with me they're laughing at me but they get a rise they make some money doing it whatever it's it's fine yeah. i don't care about that what i care about is now the person who watches all their content comes after me and my family personally which has happened many times yeah um he'll never tell you about these people that came after him and he always uses that my family excuse now it's a weird thing ever since he got married it was probably the most annoying things ever the second dsp got married it's like my family my family Oh, I, I couldn't tell you all while I had a cat unless you paid me $2,000 to protect my family. DSP was sitting there trying to tell all of us that the, these these detractors, these trolls, they're so sick. They would have broken into DSP's house if they found out he had a cat. And, and while he's in Connecticut, they would have killed Jasper. They would have broken the house and killed Jasper. You're telling me your detractors would have pulled a military black ops, somehow got past your gated community security, found which house you were in, Broke in without anyone else noticing to ritualistically kill a cat in a satanic motion. Phil. Oh my god. Why do I just trash? I've wasted my life on trash. And that's what I'm worried about. Like, I don't care if someone makes a video, this is how you don't play. Here's a montage of Phil sucking at Dark Souls. Big deal. But you make yeah. a video that says, yeah. Phil is 100% a scammer. And he regularly, every day, he, he steals money from his viewers by lying to them constantly. And he's a really dishonest, disgusting person. And he really shouldn't exist. You're going to get people who are going to, like, in their head, not understand that that's a video to make fun of me. They think this is a call to action. And now they... And now oh, come on, Phil. Cut it out. Come on. You don't see me doing posts like, NAFTA members threaten me. Because, like, if I get that, everyone's like, whatever. Nobody's coming for me. I grew up in the ghetto. If someone's coming for me, I wouldn't see it coming. That's how it works. They don't announce, we're going to get you. Ooh, little mister, we're going to get you tomorrow afternoon at 2.45. Please be there. Be punctual. And now they think that they have to do everything they possibly can to hurt someone like me. Me or someone like me. Um, some of the stuff that's happened. I Who wants to hurt Phil? Last I recall, he's faster than Mike Tyson. And he could probably take him in a fight and kick his legs out from under him. Why would I want to fuck with a man that can stop Mike Tyson? <laughs> Well, if I fought Mike Tyson, I probably could be faster than him. I would think, because he's pretty old and he probably can't move very well anymore.
So maybe I could get around him and have to like, like hit him in the legs or something. I'm Flint Dicker and you're watching the fucking news. It's a Gundam here. We are live on the scene while a crime is being committed by a tall, lanky black man on a short and stout Polish Italian man. Apparently, the theft is content. My God, if only the police could get here fast enough. This is an epidemic of thievery. This man has stolen contributions and views from a one Philip J. Burnell, a well-known and well-liked positive YouTuber on Twitch who has been unfairly targeted by this filthy minority. Oh, let's see. The G-Man tip me five dollars if you all rethink business strategies for streaming when you see things like... Oh, listen to, just listen to this. Oh, here we go. The restreamers making more money than let's me. Let's listen no, to this. No, first of all, dude, I don't pay attention to anyone. I'll say this again. I don't pay attention to anyone who steals my content. I don't care if they make more money. That's fucking, in my opinion, that's fucked up fucking criminal money. They're breaking the law to make money on I my behalf. Yeah, they're and fucked he don't up know anything asshole. about it. If the law ever came down on them, that would be the end of it. Imagine ever oh if God. someone sued someone like him and said, listen, all of your content on your channel is mine. Literally, it's my restream content. Therefore, I literally own all of it. And every single dollar you ever made broadcasting said content. But no one can do that because I don't have the money to do that. And, you know, anyone who No one else can do like it that, because I don't have you know, the money to do it. Do about it. So I don't care yeah. what they make. All I care about is me and my positive streams. That's it. I really don't give a shit about anything those illegal morons do. Let them fucking break the law constantly and YouTube just allow it. Oh, my God. I don't change my business strategy based on some shithead who steals my content and doesn't have any creativity or anything that he could do anything for himself that he literally writes my fucking coattails because he's a loser who has no fucking talent and the day that I go off the internet the guy becomes obscure and no one will ever care about him again and that's the bottom line Man, that was a lot of yeah, chill not fun cheers, said, he hanging out with the chat in between color. matches I don't you have one. thanks uh, for hanging out Phil <laughs> Slug Hat did a hundred bit cheer and said, don't let them get to you, man. It's not that I'm letting them get to me at all, but someone asked, and like literally it was like five, six, seven people in a fucking row were bringing up the birthday of Tevin. Like, I give a fuck. Normally I wouldn't address this, but I have to say this, okay? Someone actually just tipped me a dollar and said, Tevin has given more back to his fans and to charity than you ever have, and you make more money than him. He breaks the law. You literally might as well say, yeah, well, the drug dealer down the fucking street you know, donates to charity and does nice things for his customers. He breaks the law. Every time he turns on a stream and illegally restreams anyone without permission, he's breaking the law. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, it's Tevin's fault. The stuff that's happened, you know, I, you wouldn't even believe some of the stuff that well, people have tried to do. I mean, do I've had it all too. I've had swathings. <laughs> I've had uh, to deal with a lot of that bullshit too. People calling my fucking mom who doesn't even know how to use Facebook or whatever. Right. You know, people people called my my mother-in-law and to and like told her that I was a neo-Nazi. <laughs> and, and she's like, "What? No, like he hangs out with black dudes." That's kind of funny. <laughs> you go through all the hassle of finding the cordlings fucking mother-in-law to call her and go jeremy's a neo-nazi get out of the house you must get out of the house it's money so okay so something happens and you know okay that's an issue but then when that's not an issue anymore the next thing is the issue because originally it wasn't about money when i started on youtube i was making tons of money i didn't mm -hmm. need money i wasn't asking for donations i wasn't asking for people to tip me on streams or do any of this stuff i was rolling in ad revenue so yeah, i didn't yeah. need to ask back then it was oh phil's a cocky asshole he doesn't take his playthrough mm -hmm. seriously he insults the game developer <laughs> So I changed my attitude. I'm not going to do that anymore. Oh, well, now Phil did this and Phil did that. And that's the thing. Like, there's always a new thing yeah. that they seem to now bring up as the thing that they hate me for. Also, if you pay attention to Phil, at the time when he was white hot popular making all that money, he was telling everybody he wasn't making money from YouTube. Now we fast forward to here and DSP's like he was running high off of ad revenue money. Once again, you know, you can't trust Phil because his story is constantly changing and evolving and shifting. It's just ridiculous. And in, in a few more years, if anybody cares to keep doing this shit, paying attention to him, like Tevin, which I'm sure he'll get tired of that shit at some point. He has to. He's going to like go to the doctor one day and they're going to go, sorry, son, you got a fucking tumor in your brain. 
It's shaped in a, a, in a DSP or something. It's real weird. Point being, in a few years, DSP is going to go, oh, I was making so much money on Twitch, guys, back in 2018 and 2019, but now I barely make anything. You got to contribute. I would Do say initially they'll tell you it's money, but then if you kind of debunk what they're talking about, oh, that didn't really happen. Here's what really happened. Oh, well, didn't you also know that Phil did this and this and this and this and this yeah, and this and this? Yeah. You know? You know what the big one that came up with the most uh, was this cat thing. Do you know what that's about? <laughs> like, oh, yeah. People, people said, um, here's how it was told to me, that like he had an ex, an ex goal for money and then to real reveal something. Yeah, that was, was me who cat. told Jeremy about what, the cat thing. What was that even about? <laughs> was that how long ago was that? That was a few months ago. Two months, two months ago? Three months okay. ago? Okay. It was fairly recently. Oh, um, okay. It was August 9th, Phil. Don't you fuck with me. Get with the answers. Okay. It was fairly recently. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, it was. That's right. That's probably why they're all talking about it. Give me that pignosis, boy. Because it just happened a few months ago. Oh, okay. uh, but no, I had a stream where I told everyone it was a special event, a marathon style stream that I was going to be playing a certain amount of games, certain type of game. You know, it was a, it was a kind of a gimmick event. It was Mario 64 fell cut to shit because I needed to yeah. raise funds. I was in a big, bad financial position. I had a bunch of uh, things coming up that I needed to pay. And I looked at I know I can't do it. Every five minutes, he's in a bad position. That's the one thing that never changes. Guys, I'm in the worst financial position of my life. He's been in that for like four years now. You, you're like a broken record. It, it's stuck on him. Oh my God, Phil. Let me tell you, turn around. He needs money. Phil's like a drug addict. One of the theories is Phil's a heroin addict, but I told people, like, there's no way Phil's a heroin addict. He'd be thinner. I would tell you about all the ways you could contribute, right? I would. I would say, oh, you could. Pay, go to Patreon, or you could buy something from Teespring, you could cheer yourself or tip. The bottom line, guys, is right now, I'm in the worst financial position I've ever been in. Um, because of stuff going on behind the scenes, and I am faced with a dilemma. Alright? Uh, the bottom line is for me, I'm in a situation where I barely, barely keep everything afloat. Barely, and I mean that too, like, there have been a couple months when, uh, two weeks I was overdrawn to my bank account. It's not. But what I will say is this, guys. Today, if you want to help me out the most, and you, I really do need the help right now, please tip me on the stream. If you have the option to say, gee, I want to help Phil out today. How can I help him? Tipping me helps me the most. And the reason being is because right now, financially, I'm broke. I make way more money than Tevin. On my feet. And it's not a good situation right now. So I hopefully this event goes well and I can get back on my feet with it. Okay? Now, <clears throat> if we do raise... The initial tips goal that I'm going to have for Sunday, I'm going to do a huge positive reveal on the Shandon YouTube and never look back and try to make it 100% Twitch, but I feel like that would be really messed up. So I won't do it, you know? Flashback. I'm not kidding. I'm not joking. This is not me over-exaggerating. I made no money on YouTube. All right. I made like $80 on YouTube in the last week. Just... Being very honest and heads up, I am really badly off financially right now. Um, extremely, incredibly just out of money, not even lying. Um, I really need your support. So tonight, if you're going to be supportive, great. If you cheer sub or tip, I'm going to give you a shout out. That's a major part of the blackout streams is our interaction during the streams to get conversation going. But if you have the choice of how you can contribute, please tip me tonight. This is going to be ongoing for at least the next 10 days because it's taken at least 10 days for me to get paid by Twitch this month. Uh, I'm completely out of money, and I need to pay at least three to four bill more bills before I get paid by Twitch. Um, and some of these are pretty important things, all right? So any tips that you lend during the streams, I'm going to put straight towards Bill. I promise you, please consider it. If you can tip me, please do. It'll help me out a lot, okay? Now, yeah. I know my fans will support me if I ask for it. So I said, I wanna do, I'm going to do a special marathon stream to raise tips. And if I hit a certain level, a goal level of what yeah. I would like to raise during that day, I'm going to give you guys a positive reveal as a way to. Okay, let's put this apart. Let me see if I got this, this screen cap here. Now I got to go through my files. I call it my files of autism. So I have, I have to like create files that are dedicated to bullshit. But it's here somewhere. Oh my God. If I did not save that fucking tweet, I'm going to be pissed. <clears throat> I put it in the wrong file. Fuck me raw. Phil sits there and goes. Now I'm gonna have to find the tweet. Pray for me that I do. 
if we hit the tip goal, I have huge positive news that I'm going to share with you guys. But only if I hit the goal, basically Phil had to get that $1,000 or else he wasn't going to share this positive news. Most people assumed Phil was having a child. No, he just had a fucking cat. It was dumb. It was truly stupid. It was monumentally dumb. I might have to cut in me talking about it as a goof. For those of you who don't know, the cat that Phil is currently rubbing was a cat that earned him $2,000 on a stream. Not a bad deal if I say so myself. <laughs> Kill me, please. I want to die. He tweeted out to everyone, I have big positive news that I can share, but I'm only going to share if we reach the $1,000 tips goal for my Mario Marathon 64 stream. Pete Cummings fan, I don't know who the hell that is, probably some kind of a Joe. And as a Gundam tip me a dollar, said big thank you for the good work. Alright, long story short, because ain't nobody got time for that, DSP gets the money, and he pulls out Jasper the Cat. My god, it was a triumphant moment in gaming. With DSP pulled out his thousand dollar cat reveal. Ladies and gentlemen, Dark Side Phil here, and today I ran a Super Mario 64 marathon, uh, a game that people wanted to see for a very, very long time. Come on up here. Come on up here, buddy. You wanna come up here? Or you want me to pick you up? <laughs> Someone who actually is not a new addition to the family. Someone who I'm going to, uh, to introduce you to today. He said, well, $1,000 cat DLC. Well, it's not a DLC, but it certainly is some, you know, information you guys had no idea about. And something that I wanted to share with all of you. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> mad Liquids first. The, the people who are chat are mad are you. Because you're the tractor, and there's a bunch of them in the stream chat, and they're all pissy about this. Because I raised so much money tonight, and fuck off. It's that simple. <laughs> Now, a lot of people said DSP either A, had Cat, his girlfriend, pregnant. Yeah, I know. Cat and Cat. Cat with a K, though. Or DSP has a pet cat or something. DSP goes, no, I don't have a pet cat. You guys are wrong. You'll have to find out. Only to find out they were right. DSP spins it as, oh, everybody thought I just got a cat, but I had this cat for months. Now, the reason why this created such a level of dissension and debate and it also lost DSP some mods and even his friends that used to stream with him started laughing at him. Constantly, let's uh, let's just backstab him again to get my friend in there. He probably didn't think about that, you know. Oh, so there you go. So the bottom line is just literally admitted that he's an asshole. He literally publicly just admitted in the stream chat that he's an asshole and he was underhandedly trying to hurt me purposely behind my back. He just admitted it. Okay. Oh, you, oh, you're right, you will take the ban. You're absolutely right, you will take the ban. You'll take the ban hard, right in your fucking ass. Get the fuck out. Bro, that stream was fucked up, even for... Yeah, it, it, I mean, it is fucked up. It really is fucked up. Alright, so let me read this real quick. To explain in a little more detail, his tier 1, reveal 1K, was that... He had a cat, which okay. two K was that he allows it to come in his room and might show up on camera. What the fuck? <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's the, that is some scummy sound. You know? <laughs> That's wild. <laughs> Triple take here. Oh shit! <laughs> Give me an extra fifty dollars and I'll let him come in the room. Hey, bring the cat. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna bring the cat. In the <laughs> is because they thank you. And this is something that could maybe even affect po positively my streams in the future or sure. my content. We'll see, we'll see, you know. But that's how I spun it. It wasn't, oh, you know, this is a life-changing event. That I, you know, <coughs> I'm promising you guys the world that there's gonna be some crazy thing if we raise a certain amount of money. And I never even oh, okay. told anyone what the amount of money was or anything. It was just all, in fact, it's that morning, I, I just out of my head pulled a random number out of my head, never expecting that I would reach it. And the number was $1,000, okay? okay. I was, Notice how Phil's number always starts at a thousand dollars. 
because right when this interview dropped, he had the one thousand dollar respect retrospective stream. That's the mm, let it go. Like For I'll never day. reach this on one stream. I'll never yeah. do this. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. That'd be but a I killer said, stream. Bullshit, Phil. You've done it a couple times. How many times? It, remember the the Christmas stream where DSP got like seven thousand dollars. Come on, Phil. Cut this shit, dude. What the hell? I'll just freaking, I'll pull it out of the sky. I'll put it up as a goal. Maybe it'll motivate people. If I had got a couple hundred dollars, I would have been thrilled, right? Yeah. So I do the stream, and it's about three quarters through the stream, and it's almost over. And I'm like, well, guys, you know, just so you know, here we are. The stream's almost over. There's the goal. Here's where we are. If you watch the stream, there's one point where Phil's in his chair, and he's, like, doing a little dance. He's like, I have a, a positive feeling about the stream to guy today, guys. I feel like a big donation's coming. Phil had already set up, what was it? Who was the guy? Uh, something John. Oh, shit, I can't remember. I can only remember Baby Man Gaming because everybody makes him a meme. And Derek. Hey, Derek, thanks a lot for coming in. Goodbye. Is something John. It's this dude who just, his wife just died. And now he throws large amounts of money at Phil. Whatever Phil needs it. The stream's almost over. There's the goal. Here's where we are. And people were like, well, what, are you still going to reveal the thing at the end of the stream? I was like, I don't know. We'll see. And the truth of the matter is I was going to do it anyway. I didn't yeah. tell anyone that because obviously you want to motivate people to contribute. Sure. I was going to do it anyway. Yeah. But Look at Phil. He's a fucking huckster. Look at him. Mr. Generous. He would have given us the Jasper news even if he didn't get the money. Then why did you have a tier two gold, Phil? If you didn't think you're going to get that $1,000. And the funny thing was he didn't even tell you what the tier two gold was. He didn't have a price for it. He's just like, and uh, you know, there's going to be a second tier goal. And if we reach that, well, I want to motivate people to contribute. All of a sudden, people started coming out of the woodwork and started contributing. If you can believe it, we hit it. two people, dude, two people, two people, Phil, came out and did the bulk of it. And then at the very end, another guy gave him like, I don't know, 100, maybe 200 bucks. So then three people came in, but predominantly the, the $2,000 came from two dudes. Fuck, I hit the wrong button out of anger. Hit the goal, okay? Damn. So I'm yeah, like... That's a good day's work. That's, a, Come on, that's bro. crazy, right? Yeah. So I'm like, all right, this is amazing. Stop the presses. We'll stop playing games. I just want to introduce you to my pet cat who had lived with me for a while now, and I actually have complete... Phil talked about Jasper in that clip like it was his child. Come on, DSP. I want to introduce you to a member of the family that we have for a long time. <laughs> That's his, like, his, his, his stupid laugh. <laughs> it's the laugh he does when... I don't even know why he does it. It feels like a nervous tick to me. I really kept him under wraps because, as I told you, I have such a weird cloud of haters yeah, that they yeah. just... they try Notice how I just told you he was going to make it about how people want to break into his house and kill his cat. Well, here he goes with that shit again. I try to fuck with my private life, and I knew that if anything that I reveal about my private life, they make it a negative, no matter what. So I'd actually kept my cat private and not let anyone know about him oh, for a okay, long time. Okay. It was right. a secret. I never yeah. let him in my office. You The funny thing is he has a bell around his neck. Damn if I know how they didn't hear it in the hallway, like ringing behind the door or whatever. <laughs> Whenever anyone catches Phil in a lie, he tells them they're stupid. You know, Phil sitting there like, oh, I can't have a pet, guys. But then he keeps putting these stupid little stuffed animals in the background. One of them's named Potion. It was like a cat or something. Like, come on, Phil. He had a rabbit for Easter. Meanwhile, he has a real pet. And he has these, like, stuffed animals as mascots to surrogate pet. Because Phil can't afford to have a pet, you guys. It's so sad. Please send contributions. But they I have never five did. cats, by the way. <laughs> oh really so yeah, there you go yeah. you know they make noise and stuff so good god lord knows yeah. how no one knew that i had a cat i don't know maybe they guessed or whatever but really queen <laughs> so finally i said here he comes maybe they guessed or whatever bullshit those detractors know you so well it's scary phil Look, i got a cat how often do you hear Smokey in the background exactly Smokey barely brings his ass in here he don't give a damn a cat don't care so finally, I said, here he comes, and I let him in, and I'm playing with him, and we're having fun. And the thing is, there were two groups of people. My fans, my actual fans, were super happy. They were like, that's the cutest cat ever. This is Okay, here's another lie. There's like only a handful of sick of fans that were happy for Phil. He literally lost moderators over this. If you go, oh, man, I lost all the screen caps from his form, right? His stupid form. I don't know why DSP has a website anymore. He's about as relevant as my cat's last fart. Anyway, 
even on his forum, his fans were like doing entire posts that kept getting locked, by the way, where they're like, Phil, it was really not cool of you to do this large tip goal to reveal a cat, blah, blah, blah. And they would get locked and deleted. The DSP is all like, oh my God, dude. He's so lucky I wasn't in on this. I would have been up his ass like an enema. A cool reveal. This is something that Phil never does. Reveals part of his personal eye. He yeah. hasn't done this in such a long time. This is really actually cool. This is cooler than what we thought it was going to be. Some people thought it was going to be all my... Really? Really, Phil? It's a fucking cat. Phil's acting like he had a bangle tiger come in the room and do a backflip. <laughs> Phil's like, the people... Well, notice how whatever if something DSP tries to paint is positive for itself, it's like the best thing ever. It's the greatest thing ever. Like, oh, Phil, as a cat, this is great news. There's peace in the world. Oh, my God. Phil, as a cat. <laughs> this is such good news. It's so super positive. Look at Jeremy's face. He's like, dude, it's just a fucking cat. People thought it was going to be all. I'm announcing I'm adding a piece of equipment to the stream or something. But to see yeah. this cat and the cat now, the cat has free room to come into my office whenever it wants. Now I leave the door open. Oh, you see a little rabbit in the corner? That's one of the little mascots he used to have on his stream and put it up in a chair because he couldn't afford to have a pet. So if he wants to join me on a stream, he'll come in. It was funny. Tonight I'm playing Street Fighter and he's like messing with my hand when I'm trying to do moves and stuff. <laughs> you know, it's a funny, silly they thing. They do that, yeah. I don't recall that happening. If Jasper gets too far in the way, like I said before, DSP will spray that little motherfucker with a bottle. Come on, Phil. They do thing. that, yeah. <coughs> but, but the thing that gets me is there's the other group of people. Oh, my God. That's it? So Phil charged $1,000 to see his cat? Yes! Yes! Yes, that is me! <laughs> Dude, that's your old fucking friend, Brian, the dude you used to stream fucking Apex with, called you out. Dude! Really? You're gonna sit here and try and paint it like, oh, they're so negative. These people are hateful. Oh my god. They were angry. I gave you, I showed them I had a cat. It's a good time. Fuck you, Phil. A thousand dollars to tell people you have a cat. Like there's some sort of rare animal. Ugh. Oh my god, I can't, what a dishonest scammer. He said this was going to be something amazing and it was going to really contribute to the streams and this is a, a bull- Yes! How has the cat contributed to the stream? The cat came in once and hit one button that changed to some transition Phil had. Where it's like his face all scrunched up while a woman streams, screams in the background and Phil just starts screaming, Jasper did that! Jasper did that! That's the one thing Jasper did that was funny and interesting. The interactions with Jasper have been non-existent. You see Jasper just slightly more than you see his motherfucking wife. Actually, 100% more. I haven't seen Kat since last fucking October's Halloween stream where DSP told people Kat was only going to show up for a little bit before she had to leave to go to work or something. And then Kat left, right? And then DSP goes online and then spins it as this sick motherfucker named Tevin. Uh, it's Tevin's fault. He came in and his fans were harassing my wife. I watched that stream. People were sitting there kissing her ass. Cat, you look beautiful. Oh, Cat, you look so nice. Please, Cat looks like I'm gonna let it go because it's his wife and she's an innocent bystander. You just got lucky, Phil. A part of humanity hit me. <laughs> Boy B, you know, they were being really nice to her from what I could see. And he tries to spin it into something negative against Tevin because he's mad Tevin was restreaming him at the time. And probably got more donations than Phil. If Tevin gets more donations than Phil and Phil finds out, Phil loses it. Literally like two, three months ago, Phil was sitting there going uh, going off on Tevin about illegal contributions. That's his money. I don't know where I'm going to find this clip, but he's sitting there going, yeah, these restreamers, when people give them money, that's my money. It's like they're taking from me. They're restreaming my content illegally. Tevin's a criminal. He turns on his stream and illegally restreams anyone without permission. He's breaking the law. He is an actual fucking criminal that can't be taken to, to, to task because there's no policing for that on the internet unless you sue him. You are actually saying that someone who breaks the law on a daily basis is a better person than someone else. You are a fucking moron. <laughs> oh my god, you are a moron. A complete idiot. And he's like, he's attributing Tevin restreaming and laughing at this motherfucker's goofiness as being a drug dealer. DSP doesn't know the first thing about fair use. 
If he had a company, this motherfucker would be worse than Warner Brothers on YouTube. He'd copyright everything. Oh, you drew a little cartoon character that looked kind of like me, uh, so I had to copyright it. Bullshit. How, you know, and that's how they spin it. Now, on top of all that, what ended happening in the next 20 minutes was crazy. So I'm playing with my cat and everything. <sighs> a a longtime fan of mine came, came out to the stream late and was like, oh, this is amazing. And he gave me another $1,000. Whoa. That longtime fan you were waiting on to show up. He prolonged that stream as long as he could. And then the fan shows up. What was it? Baby Man Gaming. One of those guys. And you're like, oh, I'm sorry. I missed the stream, Phil. Here's the $1,000. That's the guy he was dancing about. Phil set that up beforehand. I'm 100% sure. Because he's, I have a feeling we're going to hit the tips goal tonight, guys. But you can't see me dancing around like Phil. Fuck. Yeah. I don't know. I've never had a donation that big. <laughs> like, that's crazy. It was not. I was like, I, I wasn't expecting that. That's crazy, right? I'm super happy now, obviously. But then again, yes. watch that. Watch that clip on DSP Gaming if you want to. He doesn't seem like he's that happy about it. It was like almost like it was expected. Good, my slave has come with my contribution. Then again, so now the new conspiracy is this whole thing was planned. Phil already had someone lined up to give him the thousand dollars behind the scenes. So oh, the whole thing okay. was a scam to get his other yeah. fans to give him money too. You know, th this is what I mean. This is what these people now. Once again, the Coraline doesn't know shit about Phil. Phil has set up shit like this before. I don't know how many months ago, maybe a little bit close to a year ago. DSP got super trolled by what we call gay ops. Where a troll sets up behind the scenes with Phil to supposedly give him a $9,000 donation. DSP did all of this crap behind the scenes to try and get that money. And as a thank you, he would give this guy one of his statues. The troll has DSP go get all of his statues and take a bunch of pictures of them to find which one isn't broke. DSP gets on this dude's ass like you wouldn't believe. Like, I didn't see a contribution today. I was streaming today and I was looking for it and I didn't see it. And he's like, sorry, Phil, I was busy. The check just cleared with Chase Bank. Blah, blah, blah. I'll do it tonight when you're streaming. Big fan. I hope things go well for you, Phil. DSP has done stuff like this before and been exposed for it. He's like, oh, if I get the money, I don't want to tell people because the trolls and the detractors might do something. God only knows what. They're going to rob the fucking bank where they put your money. That's how dedicated these trolls and detractors are. So once again, you can't trust this man. He is an habitual liar. My God. Oh, Jesus. He's lucky. He's lucky I couldn't have been in on this. I would have been all over him. I would have been on him like flies on shit. People do. They think these crazy <laughs> conspiracy theories up. Okay. And they they spin them into fact. And you you mentioned these channels that just detract on me constantly. They all had their own weird story about the cat mm. story that <laughs> Phil scammed his viewers not out of one thousand but two thousand dollars somehow. Okay. Yeah. And it was all a plan behind. It was some malicious plan behind the scenes. It's like, but if you were there and you were live for the event, you would realize. If DSP doesn't think he can't get money, he don't bother with tip goals. Now, before, for the past week or two, he was doing some, like, $100 a day tip goals. He doesn't always hit that shit. But w it's weird how you figure this Mario Marathon stream is going to be real special. You got some special news that you just, out of nowhere, pick in your head $1,000, and it manifests itself. If DSP's power of thought was this strong, his ass wouldn't be in debt. He wouldn't be in the situation he's in. All right? Like, for fuck's sakes. He thinks people are stupid. And he can get away with this because the Coraline doesn't know anything about him. God, God, DSP's a dick. And he tries to always make his detractors seem like they're crazy. But the sad thing is the detractors got Phil's numbers sound so well, it's actually scary. Everything the detractors said he'd do, he does. Everything. Like when he left to Connecticut, the detractors are like, oh yeah, Phil's getting married out there. I'm like, Phil's not getting married. He says he doesn't have the money. Stupid me. Phil comes back, he's fucking married. <laughs> The detractors are like, Phil's going to reveal he has a cat. That's the big thing is. The other detractors, like the smaller ones, are like, no, Phil has cat pregnant. And they're like, no, it's a cat. And it's a fucking cat. So far, the detractors seem to be right more often than not. Didn't even get into Lavaria Media. Guys, none of that happened. It was actually a very positive, fun stream. People were having fun with games. They were contributing slowly. And then all of a sudden, they realized, oh, man, he didn't hit the goal. Let's help Phil out. And at the last minute, everyone kind of rallied. We hit the goal. It was amazing. Okay, here's my cat. It was only two people, Phil. Why are you pretending like the entire community? Here's my cat. You know, not really a big deal. It wasn't like I was publishing this for months that this was going to be a crazy life-changing reveal for everyone it was just something as a reward a little positive thing at the end of the stream if we yeah. hit the goal 
All right. And like I said, I was I was definitely going to show the cat anyway. I wasn't going to like hold it back as a secret. I was eventually going to show Why, Phil, you weren't going to hold the cat back as a secret? The cat's been a secret for a fucking year, Phil. Phil, come on, Phil. Philbert. <laughs> oh, my God. This guy. I'm, I'm going to choke myself out. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm only 35 minutes in. Fucking kill me. Show the cat, but... People just want to make shit up. And that's the thing. That's the hot new thing that feels a scammer. His $2,000 cat. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, um, Phil, you are a scammer. Project 7. Fuck you, Phil. Where's Project 7? Oh, oh, the, the Patreon goal wasn't for a revival of Project 7. It's He said this like a few months back when he got called out on Project 7 again. It was for a trailer for Project 7. People, um, nah, dude, let it go. We got to get through this. So I really don't watch those. There's a couple of YouTube channels that I watch that will occasionally meme on you a little bit. But that would be me. But <laughs> I don't watch some of these. I mean, I definitely have. I watch some of the Wings channels because they're fucking hilarious. <laughs> Wings is just a different dude. Like he hasn't figured out how to lean into it yet, and he's still, you know. But the um, the funny thing was. That that was a really big deal, and, and look, looking back at it, do you think maybe that that like I do it with thumbnails all the time? Like, I think the title's okay, or I think like you say, hey, look, I just thought I was gonna do something, you know, important, but sometimes it's hard to judge like how your viewers, or in your case, also your strong detractors, will view something like that. You know, they're probably like, oh, Phil's got a kid on the way. Or, or something like that. And, and sometimes you can't avoid the way people react to your thumbnails. That's how I view it with your titles. So maybe that was a case of where like, oh shit, maybe, maybe I should have had like a more, you know, normal title kind of thing. DSP's thumbnails are the laziest thing ever. Uh, it, with DSP's thumbnails, you know exactly what you get and a piece of shit. <laughs> Phil's honest there. Yeah, the, th the thing is, you're right. Like, how do you say that? Because uh, essentially, I didn't want to spoil. And it's yeah. like, oh, it's a minor or it's a kind of a middle level thing. People were guessing, of course, the whole time. They were guessing, is it a pet? Is it this or that? I can't give them a hint. Do people literally guessed on stream, Phil, are you going to reveal that you have a cat? And he goes, I don't have a cat. I can't afford a cat. Fuck you, Phil. People hit it dead on the, hit the nail on the head and Phil still told him they were stupid. I can't afford to feed a cat. Turns out he's been feeding a cat the whole time. He's been feeding two. Boom. And the problem is when you don't give a hint, now that now they naturally build it up to be bigger than what it's supposed to be, right? right they they're right, not right, they're right. building their own expectations it. up. Nobody was building their expectations up. We know what we're getting with you Phil. the bare minimum. You take mediocrity to new motherfucking levels. Webster's Dictionary can't even come up with a word for it for you. And I can't do anything about that. Now, the, the funny fact about the whole thing is every single person who contributed that day liked it. Every person who contributed on that stream was happy. I never got a single person who came to me and said, Phil, I feel like the contribution that I gave you was dishonest. It's because you told us one thing and it was another. And the thing is, that's what always happens when I do. Yeah, the people who gave you money would have gave you money anyway. All right. They would have given it to you anyway. A large portion of his chat were disappointed with that reveal. A large portion. There were people in his forums upset on Twitter. Your own fans, your own mods. People you stream with called you out and he's sitting here pretending like it was like some splinter cell of nutsy, nutty ass motherfuckers who just want to ruin everything Phil related. This reveal sucked, dude. It was garbage. It was total trash. How was it? They go, you have a cat. Cool. A lot of people in America have cats. Good God. It's, it's not like a reveal. It isn't. It's like, a, oh, guess what type of socks I'm wearing? They're white. When I have to do fundraising or whatever, the people are happy. The people who actually contribute aren't the people with the issue. It's the people who criticize me, the people who do full-time detraction on me that always have the issue. It's never the people who are positively contributing. It's the people on the outside watching that seem to have the issue. So who yeah. really got scammed? Why did your mod leave because of it? Why did some other mods get upset with it? Why did people in your own forums who've been fans for years talk about how they didn't like that reveal? 
Phil makes it sound like only the detractors had a problem with it. He's a fucking nut, dude. This is pig gnosis full throttle. Was it yeah. the viewer who contributed and was happy with the result? Or was it the person who blew up the expectation to be something it wasn't? And now they're now nobody blew up these expectations, Phil. Quit bullshitting. Oh, now we can use this as more fuel for more videos for our channels. And that's essentially yeah. what it turned into. Okay. <clears throat> no, it didn't. No, it did not. Like I said before, most detractors get tired of Phil's shit. David Davidson used to make some of the best DSP videos. Now he barely does them because he's sick of DSP. Memeology stopped doing DSP. He's doing better than ever. DSP was holding him back. One day, man, the detractors are just going to be like, you know what? Fuck this dude. And that will be the end of Phil. That was what will kill Phil. Then it'll be like a down the rabbit hole part two. The fall of DSP. Detractors move on to something else. Let me ask you a non-drama related. Let's get back on like an interesting question. So this was an interesting one that came in. And I do appreciate it, by the way. I, I'm going to keep to the time that you said you had. You've already been very generous with your time. So I can go, you. just so you know, I can go to about... Yeah, Quarterly, speed it up. It's time for Gin and Jasper, all right? DSP has to go watch wrestling while drinking gin. Honestly, I could probably go to about 11 p.m. my time, so I could go like another 40 minutes if you wanted. Okay. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, let's see. Let's see how you keep... <laughs> Talk to me in 20 minutes, see how you feel. Um, <laughs> the... Uh, Here's one that I thought, you know, while I actually just I should ask you about the arcade one up machines, too, because I actually I'm going to get your opinion on those in a minute because I just bought a bunch of them. Are you familiar with those? Oh, I've like, seen them in the stores. Yeah, I saw yeah, that they're, they're like, like smaller uh, versions of arcade cabinets of various games you could get on them. I've seen them. Yeah, yeah. they had a Street Fighter two one that I bought today. A Mortal Kombat yeah. one that I bought. They come with a riser. So they're like more like a normal dude on the real DSP's body has no muscle definition. Wait, didn't I ask Cordling to ask DSP about his workout regimen? <laughs> I wanted to know how atrophied his muscles are. Yeah, of all the of all the shitty things DSP has done, and there are many, the only one I ever had a problem with was the the striking or flagging other people's videos, which you've said in this in this stream, like, yeah, hey, look, that was old me. Back you in know, the day, I didn't there like was, that, there was no, like, back in the day, like, way back in the day. We're talking, again, like, seven years ago. Yeah. Ralph, that was a lie. The lie detector determined that was a lie. Snort Brunel wasn't seven years ago. Snort Brunel has been around, what, four tops? And DSP made the switch to Twitch in 2018. And Snort Brunel was getting in trouble. So that was, like, two years ago. Everything Phil talks about, it's like he always tries to frame it like 10 years ago. No, man, come on, dude. You tried this before. You There's DM photos of you trying to set up hit operations on the tractor channels. There was like no way to do anything about that stuff besides ask nicely. Hey, you know, I think the video you made is real mean about me. Could you take yeah. it down or talk to me about it first? Get my permission? Could you basically use my content without permission? Maybe if you had asked first, I would have said, okay, it's kind of messed up that you just did. DSP, do you ask game publishers if you can use their content first before you stream on Twitch their new games? And then when people don't give DSP any money, he sits there and blames the game. I don't know what's going on. I'm for sure, but I don't know why. Like, today was slow, too. Like, last two days, yesterday and today, things have been slow, and I don't know why. I'm playing the new releases. I'm playing the chill games that people like. I, I don't know what else I can do, you know? It, you know, I, I apologize that the big releases this month weren't very good. You know, Anthem's going to be a dud on Friday. Far, Far Cry New Dawn's a dud. Crackdown 3's a dud. Jump Force is a dud. Metro, Last, uh, Metro Exodus is good, but people hating on the game because of the fucking stupid controversy with the, the Epic Games debacle, getting that launcher, and, oh, it's boring, even though in reality it's one of the best SPSs in the past three years, but, oh, it's boring. There's people whining. You know, I don't know what else to do Um, in this regard. I just got to keep playing. What's out there until until better games come? You know there will be newer games, better games in March, but you know I'm doing what I can. Um, hopefully people will continue to show up, um, you know, and support. I don't know what else to say. Um, so that's it for tonight. No, it's you, Phil. So why would they need to hit you up to go, Phil? I'm gonna make a video showing what a fucking schner you are. Are you cool with it? <laughs> come on, Phil. Jesus Christ. It's kind of messed up that you just did this without my permission. Yeah. Um, today, it's the Wild West. Everyone uses everyone's content for anything yeah. under yeah, the sun. Yeah. Fair you use know. is just, yeah, it's over now, right? I see right. people everyone use just my does content everything. too. I'm like, whatever. 
fuck, I can't do anything about it even if I wanted to. Right. But back then it was a relatively new thing, and I saw that it literally was those, this is how you don't play videos, took a negative light to my content in a way that had never happened before and made it virally popular, and I was terrified because yeah. I didn't have anything to fall back on at the time, and I was like, what's going to happen if now people hate my guts overnight, and I have no recourse? So admittedly, back in the day, there were a few people who I tried to like take down their videos. It was, by the way, I'll say this, it wasn't a lot. It was maybe a small handful over the course of a couple of years. In fact, a couple of times it was Machinima who did it, and I didn't yeah. even ask them to. They just yeah. went ahead and did it on my behalf, and I found out later, and then I got shit for it. I don't believe that for a minute. Whatever anything happened back in the day, DSP ran to Machinima with the quickness. Because people are saying that I'm telling Machinima to do stuff that I never told them to do. This is another I issue that I have with Machinima behind the scenes. But um, that sounds I like you regret that, and you, and you're you're not like that way anymore, though. Which is there's no, the important. There's thing. no point to doing it. There's no point. It, 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 it's it doesn't productively do anything to try to take down other people's videos. If anything, I just wish more people would understand and be more conscious that when you're going to make those kind of videos that that concretely can hurt someone. Because mm -hmm. here's a personal example. Back in the day, I used to just say shit for, for, for shock value. I would say completely misinformed things. Like I would say anyone who plays Minecraft is a small child and an idiot. And why would anyone play Minecraft? They're all dumbasses, right? Mm -hmm. And people would actually like believe me because I had a big following back then. They were like, no, that's well, true. Everyone who plays Minecraft is an immature idiot. I didn't know anything about Minecraft. I had never played it. I knew nothing about it. I was just talking about DSP has been against Minecraft for years. Come on, dude. DSP just recently got into Minecraft, and now he's all like, I I really shouldn't have said all these things about Minecraft, you guys. It's great, blah, blah, blah. Come on, dude. And that's only because Minecraft is making a huge comeback. What, is Phil all of a sudden going to start playing Fortnite in a few years? Because he does that with Fortnite right now. The way he trashed Minecraft is how he trashes Fortnite right now. Hell, I should have kept playing Fortnite and stayed on Twitch. I'd probably be doing better. Like, Jesus Christ, dude. I mean, history repeats itself. Now, all of a sudden, he likes Minecraft. Out of my ass to, be, to get shock value yeah. out of my videos. Okay. And now I realize, my God, like, I was so irresponsible. That's a messed up thing to do, right? And You I should have been playing Minecraft all these years. Look at fucking PewDiePie. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. That's why he didn't play Minecraft, because PewDiePie was playing it and getting popular, and DSP felt he was too good for that. That's why he had a problem with Minecraft. Then there were other popular YouTubers that could put in the Minecraft game, and DSP really shit on that, dude. DSP was mad like it was a personal insult to him. If I had yeah. jumped on those bandwagons back then, I would have been way bigger than I ever was. But yeah. I was I was a very obstinate, ignorant person who just thought this whole thing was kind of a joke. I never really took YouTube seriously back then. And I thought, this is just messed up. I'll just say whatever I want. And people will laugh at it or whatever. Now, Why would you take YouTube seriously? With the level of... Con you didn't take YouTube seriously, obviously. There's no reason to for you to take it seriously now. You don't even take it seriously now that I think about it. DSP literally just throws his streams up on there. And that's it. No editing. No nothing. He throws his pre-streams up on there, an hour and 30 minutes of panhandling, my dude. Oh my god. Oh. So, the, I think the reason it stings so bad is because I don't usually do this, and I was, I perfectly summed it up, and I perfectly, basically destroyed the guy with what I said, and uh, there you have it. I say whatever I want, and people will laugh at it or whatever. Now I regret saying a lot of the things that I said and did back then. Some of the yeah. racial humor that was kind of way over the top. That, you know, I know I look back then, I'm like, there's... Is he going to blame Howard Stern for this one again? Kind of like, way too far in one direction. It's a different time, oh. too, you know. I mean, it was like 10 years ago. You know, that's a perfect example. By the way, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring up a question that I think anybody else asking it would bother you. But I will tell you first. I have gout. I oh god, I don't let it be gout. How bad it fucking hurts. I get it in my big toe and my foot, and there is nothing, and I mean nothing, that takes the pain away. That's right. So, <laughs> and 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 you mentioned the the kind of the so essentially this whole cancellation thing was basically all. Oh, Phil did these ching chong bing bong jokes, and you know what I'm you know whatever. I don't. Oh, yeah. I'm not one of those people that's offended by them. You can find them unfunny, fine, but I'm not going to say, I'm not going to put any stock in the fact that you're offended by it. Fuck off. But the, um, especially when it was fucking years ago, um, Stephen Colbert had a whole character named Ching Chong Ding Dong or something like that. And nobody <laughs> said, nobody said anything about that. So, 
Um, this funniest cancellation thing was the uh, <laughs> you don't choke about my gout, but also Ching Chong Bing Bong. That was basically, <laughs> you know, the Daily Dots article, right? And right. then um, dessert. So the quarterling, I don't know if he's being real with Phil. Like if he's lying about having gout, it's a genius move to get Phil to open up about it because usually if anyone brings up, I don't I mean, it wasn't gout like a timeout word in his fucking chat. Whatever. There's a couple words you can't say in Phil's chat. He doesn't really deal with trolls. There isn't really any troll in the DSP stream. For real. It, it never was because they were on top of that. They got it locked down. If anyone says certain phrases, you can't say horse under any context. You will get timed out or banned. You can't say Subaru. You can't say gout. So for Phil to... to oh man. I don't want to get into that. Point being, I forgot my point. This shit is starting to get to me. See, that's the thing. They'll take something that I was... First of all, it wasn't even like I was on a stream and I was, oh, let's have a serious conversation. It was like a pre-stream where people were like filing into my stream and I was giving like a little interim talk before I start with my gameplay for the day. A lot of the times I just... I'm, sh I'm shooting the shit. I'm, I'm just joking around or I'm just yeah. messing around. And someone will ask me like a super like question. They're really trying to, to, to um, enjoy them. If you like all of this and you want to see this continue, all right, please consider contributing via one of the following methods that I'm about to outline on the stream. Bob Hitch. DSP's pre-streams are an hour minimum. They are boring as fuck. And DSP panhandles for that hour. He tells you where you can get t-shirts. He tells you where you can cheer whatever bits and donations, but please send donations. The money comes to him immediately, and he needs that money right now. You're not shooting a shit, Phil. You're selling a product. He even says himself, it's time for gratuitous plugs. Quick reminder, because a lot of people seem to be joining the stream, you know, in the, in the last game. Uh, please, if you want to help me out the most tonight, please tip me. I really need the, the help with tips right now. Uh, things are not good with me financially. They're really fucking bad for the next 10 days till I get paid by Twitch. And any uh, tips that you guys contribute in the next 10 days are going straight to fucking bills so that I don't go crazy over drafting my account or getting bills unpaid, which would not be good. So please, 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 if you can contribute tonight and you're thinking about doing it, please tip if you can. Okay, guys? Thank you. Yeah. Get <laughs> him out of here. Hmm? Get him out! Like question, they're really trying to, to to start something. You know what I mean? Like they're purposely yeah, trying to get you can a ride. Tell when a bait question. Incite something, and yeah. so a question comes in, and it was like, how do you justify that? Well, how do you complain when people make fun of your own personal issues, like your gout? Yeah. How do you say that's not right? But then you could make a racial joke, like you just said a generalized racial joke, and that's okay. <laughs> yeah. And I guess maybe I didn't elaborate myself in the best way. Every time Phil says something stupid that gets him in some semblance of trouble, he always says he doesn't elaborate himself well. If you remember, which you probably don't, because the tweet is deleted, I don't know if I'll be able to find it. There was a point on Twitter where DSP was raising a stink over, there we go, State of Decay 2. State of Decay 2 came out and a lot of popular Twitch streamers got the game early to play it. DSP starts squealing on Twitch. Twitter. He starts raising a stink. He calls them shills. He calls all these Twitch streamers that got an advanced copy sellouts. He'll be playing the game day one with the rest of you. He's just a normal guy. All these people are complete and utter phonies on Twitch. Then the tweet goes viral. All these big Twitch streamers pile on DSP. They swarmed him like locusts. DSP catches a whole lot of shit from the entire Twitch community. The backlash was insane. It was even like on, you know, some gaming websites. DSP comes back the next day and realizes it was a bad move to take a shit on the floor, leave and come back. He then starts apologizing and saying that the tweet was out of context. He fucking wrote it. He didn't elaborate himself well. The dude's damn near 40. It's like, I can't figure out how to use my words. 
and immediately deletes the tweet. DSP has no balls the second something comes back to bite him in the ass because he's so afraid of losing his last bit of income. I don't even remember the point anymore. I myself in the best way. I don't know. It was literally a, a two-minute thing out of a uh, you know, four-plus-hour stream. That's, that's, that's spawned that like four. four yeah, it was like four artic four or five articles that were that wrote about that. Yeah, I don't well, know I where they it got it from. Someone <laughs> someone had to tip them off or say something. It had to be a slow news day, and they had yeah. nothing to write about. And someone sent them something. Oh, here's a clip of a of a, of a streamer or whatever. Yeah. And but but you know no obviously what up here if you would allow me to take a minute Go to ahead. actually clarify what I what I'm saying. There's a difference between generalized humor and a personal attack. Okay, generalized humor, making a generalized joke about a race, making a generalized joke about a gender, making a generalized joke about anything that's a category that's in general. I'm not even going to bother listening to the rest of this because I'm getting burnt down on DSP. Point being, Phil is trying to talk in circles again as to how somehow making fun of him for having gout or whatever is a step over the line, but him making racial jokes isn't. Listen, if you can joke about anything or anyone, you got to be able to take the heat too. You got to get as good as you give. That's the whole point of comedy, dude. People make jokes about me being short all the time. I run with it. Run with it. If someone comes in there and hits you over the head with gout jokes, instead of banning them, you know, the lean-in manual ban, you should have ran with the jokes. Frankly, if you can't take someone making fun of you, you shouldn't make a single joke, dude. Not one. That's how it should work, honestly. Phil is weird like that. Oh, don't say anything about my wife. Don't say anything about my cat. Don't say anything about my gout. Don't ask me about taxes unless I'm talking to you about taxes to give me money for the taxes. But other than that, shut up about it. It's a dead topic. We're moving on. We're in a gameplay stream, you idiot sort of thing. Oh, God, I'm burning out, dude. Oh, I forgot he talked about Chris Rock. Oh, come on, Phil. Now you're on the level of Chris Rock. You can't even write a joke. Okay, at this point, I'm fast forwarding a lot. You know, you don't even, you, 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 if anything, there's nobody stayed in this long, like three people. At this point, Jeremy, the quarterling, gets DSP to talk about his drinking. And in the detracted community, we make fun of DSP for gin and his, his, his drink of choice is like gin and Sprite, last I recall. So, you know, gin and Jasper is what we call it when he gets off stream. At least I do. I stole that from Almighty Tevin. Now the Coraline gets in to at least talk about drinking. The question is, will this be funny? Last fucking two mm. weeks. For me, it's the red meat. Like, I used yeah. to eat tons of red meat. I used to eat steak. I would have burgers. I would, you know, every moment, lunch meat. You know, I loved red meat. And dr I would drink. I used yeah. to drink way more back Were in the like day. Were you like a I, wine whoa. guy? Or, or... I, no, I was do like, like uh, rum. At one point, I was really heavily into rum, and then it was like gin and you know mixed drinks, not yeah. you know not yeah, shots, too. but like That's mixed drinks, too. stuff like mixed that. Mixed drinks, yep. And not not having any kind of responsibility, I would just eat red meat five days in a row. Drink yep. you know drink whatever I wanted. I'm a fucking YouTuber. I you know I just got to film videos tomorrow. Who cares if I got a hangover when I play yeah. video games, right? Who gives a <laughs> yeah. That's how my attitude was when I first started this whole thing ten years ago. And it caught up with me about, I think it was four, yeah, 2015. It caught up with me in 2015 where I got it How bad old are you, about 30? all of a sudden. Uh, at that point, I was, yeah, 33, 33. Yeah, that's. I love DSP for these sort of stupid things. That's it's like a pinch of gold dust. It's a very little bit. Basically, what he just told us is he was living so high on the hog. DSP was getting loaded every night and eating red meat, which means DSP was probably having steak regularly. DSP was having some nice meals. He's mixing his drinks. Motherfucker walking around his house like he's in the Oval Office, <laughs> getting loaded, eating nice meals. And that's how he got gout. God bless you, Phil. See, you want to know what I do when I'm like, I'm feeling high on the hog? I, 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 I gotta stop doing this personally. I've been eating a lot of KFC and Wendy's meals. Because, you know, I wake up and I'm like hungry or something. And I got nothing in the refrigerator. My refrigerator looks like shit. <laughs> So it's like I freak out. I'm like, oh my god, the people want a video. I gotta eat as quickly as possible. Then I run to KFC as quickly as I can, and I have to pray to God. You know, they had the nice white lady working there. She at least gives me pieces of chicken that don't look like the chicken was abused before it made it to my plate. And then I scarf that down and get to work on a video. Meanwhile, DSP's got time to mix drinks and whatnot. He's having red meat meals. Oh, Jesus.
I could only imagine what that YouTube money must have been like. I sit and fantasize about the house I could have had if I was big back in the day. That's what I want to hit for me, to be honest with you. Like, I'm, you're not, I don't think you're fat. Like, I'm a big guy. And um, it didn't, I never had a problem till I was probably 33, 34. And then one day I woke up and I couldn't walk. And yep, out of nowhere. Know, yeah. What did I do? Yeah. Did I break my foot? What did I do? Because you don't think it could be gout. You're like, I must have, I sprained my ankle. I broke Who a bone. What did gout? I do? Yeah, right. yeah. That's the, that's, that was kind of the running joke around my family even with me. Like, gout, what the fuck? You know, and I'm like, hey, imagine having broken glass in your joint. Yeah. You know, and then having it always be there. Where my my big toe is like swollen up to like three times the size, you know, right? And um, people around me eventually understood, like, okay, well, we're not gonna give him now. Sh I'm gonna tie up Tevin says this because I wasn't around for Goutopia. Tevin says during the time of gout, whenever it would flare up, that was the day DSP said he wasn't gonna be on stream. And if I had to believe two people's words, DSP or Tevin, I go with Tevin. So this whole I'm putting on a happy face to stream. But my foot is killing me. I think he's bullshitting. I got that. Do you, um, are you out in Seattle now? Yeah, I, don't, I live just outside of Seattle. Seattle, so Seattle. Yeah. yeah. Somebody asked this question. It's more specific. I got a bunch of questions with probably seem like some of your fans too. So maybe this is like, said, uh, when DSP moved out to the Seattle area, he was excited to meet people, experience the outside. And look, if these are like secret clone troll questions, <laughs> I, I literally don't know. You know, I right. tried to pick the ones that seem genuine. Um, experience more outside of his new home. Does DSP feel like he accomplished any of this? The reason they're asking that question is because they know that because of my current oh, financial it situation, question? it's okay. a financial situation question. They know I have to work six days a week full time and I get one day a week off to spend with my wife. DSP makes his streams sound like he's working in a coal mine, bro. Every time he talks about it, I work five days a week, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, dude, you're just streaming. Streaming with Zell, you know, it's just sitting there in your game and in your interactive. Phil don't really do nothing funny or interesting. He's no cardboard cowboy. You know what I'm saying? He's not that little Australian girl for when that does these like little camera cutaways when guys go, can I see a picture of your feet? And the camera goes all over the room and she's like, no, no, stop it. No, no, all over the place. DSP just plays some games, gets screwed up, and occasionally he might answer a troll question. That's the most you're going to get out of him. It isn't the most strenuous job ever. You can look at DSP's body and tell he don't do nothing, nothing that requires the use of any muscles. If DSP was like, I can't even think of any way to frame this funny. Like the muscle atrophy this man has is crazy. I mean, God help him if he don't wear a black t-shirt. We kind of see his man boobage. Jesus. Long story short, it ain't hard work. And that's it. I yeah. don't have time to go out and have friendships. I don't. I literally have to work my ass off to keep... Work his ass off. DSP streams and then he takes the videos he recorded for YouTube and he uploads them. And he says he has to babysit the uploads to make sure they finish. Which then tells you DSP must upload a bulk of videos at one time. Probably on multiple browsers. That's why it's slow as shit. And he just sits there and checks them every now and then while drinking. You would think DSP was a Chilean coal miner. This man has ne- Oh my god. I put more effort in 30 seconds of editing a video. <laughs> usually with my bits. Than DSP is putting in anything video wise in years my head is hurting from this dude i don't know how much longer i can hang in here everything i have because i'm in really bad financial position behind the scenes so when they're asking that they're taking a jab and saying haha phil doesn't have friends he doesn't have a life oh, outside his all right okay i'm sorry ha, ha, ha. i didn't know. wow what a, what a what a deep dig my god these trolls they tricked jeremy and they made jeremy ask dsp such a hard and mean question why don't you have friends phil Shit. You had two stream partners, then you ditched them when they didn't make enough money in Apex. No, no it's cool. I, didn't know. You, you know, I know you didn't know. It's fine. Uh, it's perfectly fine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, let me ask you. So if this is too specific, we can skip it totally. Like this has been great. It's really informative for me this far too. I'm, I hope you're having a good time. I'm having a good time. Sure. Absolutely. Um, 
So one of the things, one of the things so many people bring up is a fucking, like, I'm not going to ask you anything specific, but as a content creator, <clears throat> I had to learn the hard way, just like you did. And I'm thinking that you're in, I'm thinking I understand the situation better than most of the detractors would. A lot of people bring up the taxes shit. And I try to... I'm not doing the taxes, dude. No. If I talk about DSP's multiple tax bullshit, I think my head will explode. And this video will, like, taper off in, like, three or four hours. I'm gonna have to skip this one. I'm not doing DSP's taxes. I'm not staying here all night. And I try to explain to people what it's like getting big checks from YouTube or Twitch and then, like, learning... To give a synopsis of the taxes thing... Jeremy does get out of DSP that he owed tens of thousands of dollars. That means it's over 30K in back tax money or something. It's got to be. Who, who says tens of thousands? Tens of thousands sounds like a shit ton. What I do know for sure is DSP was making money and he made a lot of poor financial decisions. <laughs> Moving across country to buy a house in a gated community while also still paying for an absorbently expensive condo was probably one of the stupidest moves a person could honest to God make. What would have been smarter would have been to tough it out in the condo, pay it off, right? It would have probably been smarter to sell it for a loss. Give them that big chunk of change. And then let's say you owe 10,000, 20,000 on the condo and then pay that off in installments or something like you do you're paying in installments now but at least it would have been done sooner it seems like the condo is never ending never ending they're gonna be like trying to get money out of dsp when they're putting him in the fucking ground you know the condo associates are gonna come to his funeral and make sure they put him under six feet dsp took out a loan for his new house in washington from what i recall dsp also took out multiple loans for his business which means dsp's business has been failing for years after you took out one loan and things didn't get better, a smarter man would have said it's time to pack it up and move on. Or it's time to get a part-time job. Or it's time to figure out another source of income outside of this. That's what a smarter man would have done. Instead, DSP went out and got another loan. He put himself in credit card debt. Who in Christ's name has no money but uses their credit cards to buy a whole bunch of crap and continuously keep... Like, the more money you use in, oh, in the credit card, the larger the APR, like, gets to you, you know? The more you have to put down for a minimum payment. And the more you owe. That's how they get you. DSP's never going to get it from under debt again. YouTube got him out of debt in the beginning, and he threw himself right back into debt. The, the taxes situation is too much to get your mind on. The only thing you need to know is DSP did it all to himself. And we're somehow supposed to feel bad for him. So, the funny thing is, like, I'm looking at this, and I was about to press the end call button. <laughs> I'm not even on the shit. So I have this mortgage, and no, no debt. Um, uh, I guess. All right, let me, um, let me write down the timestamp so I can go back, and you, you can decide later if you want me to. Keep yeah, it. go ahead. So when I started on YouTube, I was making ridiculous money out of nowhere. It was just insane the amount of money I was making. For two years, I made more money than I'll probably ever make in my life in two years. Like, it was just insane. I couldn't believe yeah. it. And then after that, the bubble burst. It was the first bubble that burst on YouTube. And the money went, boom. I'm like, okay, I'm still making good money. Like, even with the dip, I'm still making crazy good money. And I took all that money that I made in those years, and I saved a lot of it. And I used it to pay off all my previous debts of my life. Like, I had student yeah. loans. I had all kinds of shit. And I paid it all off. So I was in the clear. Like, essentially, all I had was a mortgage uh, on a condo in Connecticut that I lived in where I made all my content in. And yeah. that was it. That was And by the way, not a, a ritzy place or whatever, but Connecticut well, is condo. expensive as yeah. shit. Yeah, Connecticut yeah. is very expensive. So even a little place costs over a hundred thousand dollars in Connecticut. That's how crazy expensive yeah. everything is there. Sure. So, so I have this mortgage and no, no debt. How long that ago point, was I was this? living? What's that? How long ago was this? Early oh, so 2000s? That, that was 2011, 2012. And okay. to some extent, 2013. Gotcha. No debt. And then you put yourself back in debt. A smarter man. Like you see, I'm, I'm stuck now. Fuck it. If DSP had any brains, he would have, tried harder on youtube when he did ko gaming and his attempt to follow a more streamlined and more professional version of youtube video making it actually did a little better in the sense if he actually had one video 
which was the home front revolution that took off instead of him buckling down and continuously working on edited content, even though his edited content was not that great at all. He took a vacation. This is the man you're dealing with. He has no hard work ethic. DSP's idea of hard work is putting in the bare minimum and then clocking out as soon as it's time to go. That's what separates someone successful from someone who's always going to be in debt. He's not willing to sacrifice fully. I can't even, I can't even explain it to you because it's so dumb. I, I apologize. So I was making so much money <clears throat> that I was like, I got to get out. Oh, yeah. He also moved to Washington to avoid paying taxes. He's looking to save every penny he can, but somehow spend every penny he had. They, you know, the taxes here are decent. The sales tax are high, though, right? Sales tax, I believe, is around 10%. Yeah. It's very but high. I was already paying 7% in Connecticut. Yeah. And out here with no state income tax, it's way bigger savings because yeah. I'd rather spend money when I choose to spend than just have it take. DSP only did direct capture in 2013 because everybody else is doing it and they were leaving him behind. He was losing viewers by the thousands. DSP only went to direct capture because he had no choice. And I wouldn't be surprised if DSP sits here and says, oh, there are a lot of people who like me pointing the camera at the screen. They thought it was better. Yeah, right. Because people like watching bootleg movies where it's a camera pointed at a screen rather than getting their hands on a DVD screener. I'm a streamer. In fact, I never took streaming seriously at all until 2017 when the adpocalypse happened on YouTube. Okay. Gotcha. So I streamed, but I made no money doing it. It was a fan service for people who wanted to see me live. I was still 100% in on income I was getting from YouTube ad revenue. That was okay. my, my way gotcha. I was making a living. Okay. So I move in 2014. And I'll be honest with you, my channel was starting to slow down. You could see it was getting a slow decline, but there was yeah. no like shocking warning signs. A slow decline is a warning sign back then on YouTube. This is before YouTube started going through their whole woke phase, which we're currently in, where YouTube will do everything in its power to stop a channel that it deems is not worthy because that's what the hell it does. This is back when you could actually survive off of being you, dude that things yeah. were going to go horribly wrong within one year of me moving out here just to give you some perspective here okay yeah i got i got swatted i oh my god the swatted story dude dsp swatting literally was like this dsp's playing a game the police come to his house because he lives in a gated community the police come to the door pandalee goes bill the police are here and then Phil walks off camera real quick or off the stream. It's still running. You can hear him talking in the background. He talks to the police for three seconds, comes back. Phil sits down and starts laughing. Ha ha ha, the police were here. Oh, I guess someone tries to swat. What I can't remember after that, right? It was like a nothing burger. Then the next day, DSP realizes that he could use the swatting thing to his advantage, you know, to get people sympathy. And before you know it, the detractors are trying to kill him. That's what he spend it, spend it to. It, it, Fuck me, the fact I know this shit is killing my brain. And I'm not gonna allow any of these fucking people to think that it is okay to make this negative shit about me because this is what happens, right? Shame on you if you ever made a this is how you don't play about me, if you ever decided to follow me, make a clone account on Twitter, do this childish shit on YouTube, if you thought it was funny to dox me, if you thought it was the DDoS attacks were funny, you almost got me killed. You. Yes, you. You're responsible. And if you are a human and you have morality in you, you should understand that. You contributed to it. Because no one fucking thought of me in a negative light until that shit fucking started. No one. People understood it was off-color jokes. It was just Phil trying to be funny. And, you know, I'm not, I've told you, I'm an imperfect human. I'm certainly not perfect. There have been times when I made mistakes. That doesn't mean that people should fucking die. So fuck you. Well, that's scary. A ton of stuff happened behind the scenes to my family that I don't even want to talk about publicly because it's shocking. Okay. That's fair. okay. Um, my it's so shocking he doesn't tell you. Whenever something happens to DSP, no matter what, he'll tell you about it. All right. Tevin restreaming him. He talks about it. Detractors uh, getting him for uh, using their artwork. He'll talk about it. But this he can't talk about. He can tell you got swatted. My channels were stricken down repeatedly with false copyright strikes because YouTube's program is such a piece of garbage. You can just impersonate whoever you want. This is all the way back in the early days of YouTube that he had this happen. But let's keep going. Yeah. And it forced my channel to lose that millions the of views. Was that where no. somebody like impersonated or Ubisoft or something? 
No, that was that's that was the first time that ever happened was back in 2010, and that's why I created a new channel called DSP Gaming. Originally, I was just under yeah. Darkseid Phil, and someone impersonated an Ubisoft employee and got Darkseid Phil shut down, so I started DSP Gaming. Later, I got that cleared up. Yeah. But in 2015, people impersonated different gaming companies, and then they, they actually – listen to this conspiracy, okay? Yeah. They actually made fan art for me to use in my videos. Oh, and I heard about up, this. Yeah, yeah I heard they about put this. it up on my forums in like January, February of 2015. Oh, Phil, here, use this fan art. That's brutal. They waited for me. Yeah. They waited six months. I think I recall that there's more to this story about the fan art. I don't think he gave credit to the guy who did it on his forums or whatever. And then there's this like whole big fallout where DSP said anything you post on his forums, technically he owns. Like once you post on that thread, the fan art of DSP, that's right. That's how it was. That he owned your fan art. So in his mind, and even the way he set up his forums, that once these people posted this stuff, it belonged to him at that point. That's how Phil got nailed for this. <laughs> oh, I can't believe I remembered something so stupid. Oh, my brain hurts. For me to use the fan art in all these videos, and then they struck them all down on YouTube, saying that I'd yeah. stolen it without permission. That was brutal. That was and bad. Overnight, yeah. I had to delete so many videos <sighs> that I, my channel lost like around, I think it was between six to 10 million views. And when that happens with the YouTube channel, yeah. YouTube essentially says that's a red flag. Something's really wrong with a channel that's losing 10 million views. It must have been that they were doing something underhanded or whatever. Yeah. And immediately what the algorithm does, it kicks your channel from the search rating. Okay, here's what happened. All that shit did happen. Like I said before, these fans posted the art in Phil's forms. Phil wrote some garbage where... If you post this art here, it belongs to me sort of garbage. You know, typical DSP. Everything you do for me is free, but I charge you for everything I do. And that's what blew up in his face. This happens, and then DSP got all his strikes and stuff. He goes to Machinima, and they talk to Machinima. Uh, YouTube maybe is in the mix. And the Machinima goes, um, you should just delete all these videos. So DSP, without thinking, listens to Machinima. And deletes the videos. They told him to do it. He sat there and did it. He could have put them on private and waited till this, like the 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 fire or the storm like blew over. DSP pulled the ripcord on himself. Once again, this is DSP doing it to DSP. I don't think he sat there and talked to the person like I'm going to use all your art, in my forms and stuff. Whatever. Let's just move on. I'm, uh... Yep. So overnight, yeah. my channel DSP Gaming, that used to be one of the top channels always for gaming, became unheard of. And no one could find it on YouTube. People would search for my videos and couldn't find them on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And that was the first year during the fall gaming season when a bunch of new video games always come out. September, October, it's November, December. Yeah, it's the money That's months. the money October. season. I, yeah. I would get a giant... The hardcore begging silly scene. Spike in views and a giant spike in money. My views went down. Yeah. I was like, you got to be kidding me. And ever since then, it's been thing after thing. Where wait, wait do you hear the next one? So that was 2015. So I'm trying to recover from that. It's very hard because now I've got all this debt in my name. I've got two homes in my name, all yeah. this stuff going on. Then the next year. And you took out loans. You forgot that part. Here, I find out my tax accountant from Connecticut did my taxes wrong for several years. Yeah. And well, I know what it's like filing as an internet personality. Good luck finding an accountant that knows how to fucking do that. You know, like. Well, this one, yeah. this one was just laziness. This guy, when I moved out here to the state of Washington, told me, uh, don't worry, even though I'm stationed in Connecticut, I can continue to do your taxes for you. I know what I'm doing. I'm a good guy. I know everything. So he this is just shows you how lazy Phil is. He moves from Connecticut to Seattle and listens to a guy going, oh, I know the law in Seattle. He doesn't live in Seattle. A smarter man would have said, ah, oh, we had a good run time to, uh, pick up someone who's in the area knows the jurisdiction works in this area blah 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 like any other person would would you get a lawyer from fucking connecticut to handle a case you're having in fucking you know washington come on phil long story short supposedly uh if i recall correctly the guy was also a college dean in uh the felbert lore as he said i can't keep doing this charges me so much money to fix this issue we're talking tens of thousands of dollars okay yeah. out of nowhere money that i didn't i already had a decrease in income because of all that trolling activity and the false copyright strikes and i'm just trying to recover from that and then yeah. this happens on top of it and since then it's like seriously thing after thing and i can't talk about all of it publicly because there's personal things that happen behind the scenes That's that fine. i cannot disclose <sighs> but it's just like it's a shitty situation where like i'm stuck 
and there's no like there's no way to fix it. There's no quick fix solution. I, I I'm stuck with multiple properties. One, the one in Connecticut I can't get rid of. DSP did this all to himself. That's the, the moral of the story. Everything here was done by DSP. He's the architect of his own demise. And he wants you to feel bad for him. And the sad thing is, he doesn't even own up to half the stuff he did to himself. Because the property, I owe way more on the mortgage than what it's worth. The property value actually dipped yeah, in the 10 years that I about did. That. People ask about the other property. So you're still stuck with that now? I'm you stuck with it. And unload it? I can't unload it. I tried short selling it. It got declined. Oh, uh, They won't do it. I can't get rid of it. And DSP waited years to try and short sell it. He waited years, literally a year ago is when he tried. And then he decided he wasn't going to pay for it at all. He was, he was like, you know what? If they try and come after you, they can come after you. They can try and sue me if they want. I'm not paying anymore. I think he's still paying. Essentially, it's to the point where no matter what I do, I'm screwed. So yeah. I have to choose the lesser of two evils. Do I ruin my credit? <laughs> yeah. You know, my sister's one thing? in that same spot. And at this point, that's where my computer crashed. And all that was left was the audio files. The original video files were completely destroyed. And I was up shit creek without a paddle. I was forced to try and edit this together all by ear. By listening to what little sound made it past my noise gate. Unfortunately, I don't care to do the rest of this interview. I know there are little bits of gold dust I've heard where it'd be really funny and easy to refute some of the things DSP said, a lot of them. But honest to God, as you can see, this video is past the three hour marker, I think. And uh, doing another 30 minutes or 40 of this, it looks like it's another 20 minutes left. Add with me cutting in, looking up stuff to prove the DSP's lying. And no, I, I've, I've had enough, I apologize. As far as the low question goes, uh, we all know that if he had an, I, I have a feeling DSP blew it into the carpet and then he like stamped it into the carpet with his foot, you know, like real quick and easy. It, you, you know, it, it seems like something DSP would do. I just feel like he's that lazy. I don't think he's a, he's not a man who's prepared. Oh, I went in a napkin. Bullshit, Phil. You could barely get your stream going correctly. You got to tell me you paid attention to your yanking rituals. All right, I'm out of here. I am seriously out of here. I'm going to find something to eat. I, I'm so glad to be done with this. You don't even know. And that's that. I uh, forgot to say. I should say thanks to all the people who uh, keep track of all of this. Uh, Mr. Huffstuff, Sam and Julia Cruz, uh, DSP Archives on Twitter, uh, GTG, Almighty Tevin, David Davidson, uh, The Secret Life of DSP even. Who else is in there? Uh, Memeology helped me out with a couple clips, personally. Uh, man, there are so many people that you could go through. Mighty D. I'm kind of punch drunk from all of this.